that true. We are the hosts of the Shockwaves podcast. I'm Rob Galuzzo. This is Elric Kane, Rebecca McKendry, yeah. and Ryan Turek. Hello. Ooh. Thank you guys so much for coming today. Yeah. Uh, On a Sunday at 1 o'clock. Yeah. No, we're feeling all right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, most of you know who we are for the most part, but if you don't, uh, we're a weekly horror talk show podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we usually talk about uh, things we've seen, past, present, uh, hopefully future. Uh, and then we have guests on usually mm-hmm. to talk kind of about their perspective inside the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're doing something a little special because when we're in front of an audience, it, it seems like topics seem to go well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Becca – all right, so Becca started the idea by the scariest movies we've ever seen. Yes. Right. Which is very broad. So <laughs> Way broad. Yes. <laughs> and then we had to distill it down into how many movies – Yes. What decades? Um, but then the debate has come, is it what scared us during that particular decade? Which makes no sense because right. we were like born in 1976. What age you were. Yeah, like I, I was looking like, okay, well, yeah. the 70s, you know, I was Here's the rules then. that none of you listen to. Okay. Uh, hey, I, I did, to I did my homework. The t-shirt I rule, said, I was there. <laughs> let's go by decade, yep. 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, mm-hmm. 2010s, All and, yep. and pick one or two. Yeah. Because we'll probably have lap over. It'll yeah. probably be and here's the thing, obviously we were like four in, in the seventies. Oh, yeah. So it's more like we d- movies that we discovered later on that came out in the seventies mm-hmm. and the same for the eighties mm-hmm. and all that. And I told Elric you could have more than a couple for eighties since that's our key period where we discovered a lot of this stuff. And I was sure. born in the nineties, so I'm gonna be a couple <laughs> less than that. So millennial. Just, so young. <laughs> a baby. So he says. Yeah. Uh, and you look, I mean I, I think it, there's gonna be a lot of lap over and we're probably gonna pick some pretty obvious choices. But not me. That well not Becca. There's gonna be some nun exploitation probably. <laughs> no, 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 no. Blood beach insect or porn. Uh, blood insect beach? No. Her favorite. <laughs> Is blood beach even remotely scary? No. no, but you would no, pick not it. Not at all. I but what a poster! But you would yeah. pick it's it because kind of it's like some sort of weird aquatic <laughs> yeah. thing that lives in the sand. I can do better than that. <laughs> okay. Jesus. <laughs> all right. And it, it's got a it's got a nun's habit on. No. You know what they should do is Becca, you need to do an aquatic horror film about some alien creature that swims in the ocean and wears a nun's habit. Wow. Because it combines that, all your love. Everything. Everything. It's a terrible yeah. pitch, Turk. That is awful. It's a great fucking pitch. <laughs> that should be your second feature. Actually, I'll ma- I I'm going to make it a bum house tomorrow. <laughs> One of the coolest moments this weekend. Um, is he in the audience today? The gentleman who brought me the 35 millimeter? Yes. Hello. Um, so this fine gentleman. What's your name? Eli. Eli um, brought me 35 millimeter trailer for oh, Nasty cool. Habits, oh, which is yeah. like old Grindhouse Nun movie, and I don't even know where you found that. And but none of us were surprised. Yes, it's amazing, <laughs> and it's going on my office shelf, and it's like the coolest thing. So I'm pretty psyched. Thanks, Eli. So before there, we oh, jump thank into you for this, encouraging her. before we jump into this, how's the con been, guys? I love it. Let's go to Elric first. <laughs> so I she, arrived, she has not vomited this at, time, guys. He arrives at midnight. <laughs> she touched my face. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, so that's the first, know, t- the first She was the touch. first. Uh, there's been a couple since. Yeah. Feels good. That's how he's saying <laughs> After the show, um, not gonna lie. you guys can, not. like Comic-Con, we're going to form a line halfway through the show. You can stand over there. We're going to put a table and Elric there. And, and you can touch an hour touch after the show. We'll you can just touch his face. <laughs> it's like that guy I saw on Facebook the other day. Some guy that's got a look on his face that just sends people into tears. And he goes out to different countries and stands before thousands of people oh, wow. just to stare like this. I am so confused and, by and this. And then people look upon his face and project whatever feeling they have onto his uh-huh. face. And he makes millions huh. for all of these public appearances just to do this stoic look on his face. And then you see these weeping women and men looking like, oh, my God, angsty. Huh. And, and, and they're feeling things because they're staring at this one guy. So, Elric, huh. that's going to be, be you. Him. That's going to be him. This is idea. like those damn whisper videos I don't yeah. get either. Except so. I'll be blinking in every photo. Are you sure this <laughs> isn't an blinker. upcoming Blumhouse production? <laughs> <laughs> The I man who stares. It's not. <laughs> not. How about Because uh, it's the dumbest idea. <laughs> uh, before not we... like Kraken with none habit dumb. No, no. <laughs> Could we get, uh, is there any consensus before we even get into it? Like when people say, what is the scariest? Even trying to be objective about it. Is, would we all come up with four different answers if we answered that right mm-hmm. now? Like, because I always think it's just Chainsaw Massacre. It's like if you just had to pick one film. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. You're jumping ahead. What no, but doing? this isn't yeah. from decade. I'm just <laughs> saying, the is there one movie where we would consensually say that's probably the scariest objectively? Not necessarily the uh-uh. one that scared us the most, but no? I would say Black Christmas. 
Oh. Oh, hey. Yeah. Okay. I mean, right. I think that movie's terrifying and, and every ounce of. You guys win. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we're in Texas. I was trying to play to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, but once again. Did you guys but, once feel a, but once again, you're getting ahead. <laughs> when we get to Toronto, we'll, we'll pull out Black Christmas. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Well, let's jump into the 70s, right. shall okay, we? Okay, guys, 70s. Yeah. All right. Um, when you guys were born. And, 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 you know, and if we have, you know, overlapping titles and let's just get into it and okay. converse but becca i'm really curious what is your <laughs> yes. what is you your 70s title cut or my kind of broad no no, no. what's your what's your number one scariest Scary film to you from the, 70s. from the 70s house with laughing windows <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> has anybody seen house with laughing windows i have is it uh, not fucking terrifying movie. it is fucking terrifying Two people raise their hands i don't remember it's so scary yeah, I just that, remember it being interesting. Uh, this is why I started with you. Is that, poopy, <laughs> is that Poopy Avati? Yeah, Poopy Avati. <laughs> I don't know if that's tell us, tell us why you properly say his name. Yeah. Um, so the movie... Oh, wait, this one does have nuns in it. Fuck! <laughs> I rest my case. I am so on brand. Fuck! Um, so the movie is about a, um, a painter who... Is, it's very giallo. This is like straight up Italian giallo. Um, and it's a art restorationist who is hired to come to this church and restore this painting. And while he's there, this crazy stuff starts happening. People start dying. And slowly, as he's restoring the painting, the painting actually kind of reveals the mystery of what's going on and who's responsible and everything that's going on. And that, it was made, um, I think 1970, did I write it down? Uh, 1976. Um, so at the same time, we're just kind of getting into the post hippie. So it's got all of this really trippy imagery in it, which is where the house with the lapping windows comes in. It's a lot of like weird imagery. Um, but yeah, it's got some genuinely terrifying moments in it. So that's, I would say, and this was a late discovery. I did not watch this one when I was two. Um, well, yeah. Is there another one not. when you were young, like from the seventies, or did you not? Because I, I don't know about you guys, but I found myself I didn't really see any of the seventies movies when I was that young. It was those were all later discoveries. Really, the eighties becomes the key period because we're seeing them um, as they came out. I'm yeah. wearing it. Yeah. Yeah. Jaws. Okay, like I probably yeah. saw Jaws when I was maybe three or four, yeah. um, and that I mean, like every body of water. Mm -hmm. For the longest time. And we live on, like, my, I grew up on the Shenandoah River, so, like, you walk out the front door. Those river and, sharks going to get yeah, you. Oh, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, hey, bull sharks can do it. Um, but, no, like, you walk out the front door, and you're maybe 25 yards from the water. And, so and like, my dad had no regard. And he I would just, just imagine like, her noodling, putting <laughs> her hand into holes and having big fish jump out on I'm her. not kidding. No, those catfish, <laughs> they're, they're in the river. They're mud cats. They live on the bottom. They, you, you don't. did that? I've never noodled, okay, no. Never noodled. My relatives uh, do. Okay, Thank you for okay. asking. Can I call you uh, Rebecca Mudcat McKendry? <laughs> Mudcat McKendry. <laughs> Mistress Mudcat, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, really weird, guys, but Jaws. Like, every leaf that brushed my foot, every weird shadow in the water for the longest time is Jaws. And even to this day, I mean, it's where my aquatic horror love comes from, is just this incredible fascination of I want to be in the water with sharks. I would go cage diving in a second and not even think twice. I would even consider free diving at times. Um, but at the same time, I'm fucking petrified, which also kind of sums up my love of horror movies where I will always do it and always push myself, but I'm scared to death. Hmm. So Jaws. Are you still though? Like, are, are any of us still scared by movies? I get, no. yeah, yeah, I really? would say which, what kind? Once uh, in a blue moon. when I get to yeah. the more recent one, I can say a screening okay, that cool. you and I were both All at right, that cool. I was like, yeah. okay, I can see that we were both a little freaked out. Yeah, I think it's, oh. uh, I think the times are changing and yeah. I'm just too old. Like I'm, just, I'm like I, I, I like I've seen. I feel like I've seen everything, and I've desensitized myself to everything that I just I don't get phased by anything. Well, I, think I, think I think now it's more psychological yeah. art, like yeah. things that we have a right. fear of personally as we get older. That yeah. you know, things that I think about much after the fact, it's yeah. that kind of fear rather than something yeah. that I'm scared of. You or get you get scared about. of real life stuff like uh, oh, yeah, yeah. home well, invasion. Yeah. yeah, home invasion movies. Yeah, so like, it. but I have to say, like this opens up a larger question about what fear means to each of us. Because like the the one that I will talk about when we get to our contemporary screenings that I know both Elric and I were on edge for. Mm. Like I will say, during the moment of seeing that film, I was sitting on the edge of my seat, and I, we were both very oh. on edge for it. But do things stick with me like Jaws where for like months afterwards I was scared to death of the bathtub? Um, not right. as much anymore. But well, I, I definitely think things stick with me. Like I'll think about them two days well, later. Well, I think that's suspense. Yeah. I yeah, think there's a, a delineation between suspense and fear. And going in and being genuinely scared by something I think I don't have. But um, 
being affected by a great suspense sequence where I'm invested in the character emotionally and I'm actually hoping that they get out of the situation. That still works for me. The suspense mm-hmm. and what the director is doing uh, through editing. A- it's aesthetics. Not. It's often like non-horror exactly. directors. Can people like Lynch who can do one scene that mm-hmm. could have you like, because uh, mm-hmm. they know how to manipulate yeah. all the elements of sound especially. Like mm-hmm. Lost Highway has moments like that where yeah. it's not a horror movie, but mm-hmm. it feels like a horror movie for a sequence. Yeah. Or Twin and Peaks, yeah. I, thought about, I thought about that film for days afterwards, mostly just trying to figure out what the fuck happened. But mm-hmm. even some of the sequences, it was just chilling. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Cold Hell. Yeah. Cold Hell was one of those movies where oh, I was the, just oh, the actually, recent one. yeah, the one oh, where we yeah. talked. We on talked about Shutter. this movie. Check it out on Shutter. That's on mm-hmm. Shutter a couple episodes ago. But there was this great sequence where this woman is in her cab and she ha- takes on a passenger, and you know information about this passenger, and she hasn't quite caught on to it yet. And you're just sitting there going, "Oh my god, turn around, please. Look in the rearview mirror, <laughs> please great. stop." And then shit goes down, and it's amazing. So so that's the big difference is uh, being scared for a character or Mm -hmm. being scared for yourself. Mm -hmm. And when we were kids, we were scared for ourselves because we thought the thing was going to come and get us. And I I miss that feeling. I think a lot of us chase that My news alerts. My news alerts on my phone scare me more. (laughs) (laughs) They'll just pop up, and it'll be like, oh, North Korea did this. I'm like, oh, Oh, man. All right, cool. (laughs) But you talked about goodbye, everybody. (laughs) I didn't actually put this on my list because I look back at it, and I'm like, man, I was – you know, it was fun that I was scared of that. But I've talked on the show before about how when I first saw Demons 2, I saw it at a slumber party and I was maybe in sixth grade. It, it was my slumber party. No other person would show Demons 2 at a sixth grade slumber party. Um, but it, thank you. Okay, there's one. We're kindred. Um, so, but the, the moment in it where the demon actually emerges from the television that like traumatized me where for a long time after that when I'd watch a horror movie I'd be like what if it actually came out of the TV screen that's the 80s Becca <laughs> I know right. skipping ahead well, let's go back to the 70s, 70s. So, uh, I didn't put it on I'll, my list so. since, I'm, since I'll moderate we'll the 70s we'll order later so Elric. we only have one 70s so far House uh, with Laughing Windows okay cool uh, so with me uh, alright oh I'll, Jaws Jaws sorry I, proceed I got a couple like you know obviously Jaws and no Alien. pick one what one <laughs> Well, okay, I'll start with this one. I've got, are we allowed to circle back and do a second after? You could do a second after, but pick your one. Okay, so one. All right, so when I was eight years old, uh, luckily for me, I had no idea what sodomy was, and <laughs> which, which is a good thing when you're eight. That's the guy uh, of the show. I'm still somewhat ignorant. Uh, but what I could tell was I did not want to squeal like a pig. And I was eight, and my stepfather and his older <laughs> boys put on deliverance. And Is that, that was like a family night? Yeah. It's like, I well, don't we don't think want to I've... play Monopoly. Let's watch Deliverance. Oh, so the way you feel about God. Jaws, I felt about camping. Like, <laughs> I, I knew that if I went camping, I would, someone would make me squeal. And, and, you know, and also when Burt Reynolds, like, breaks his ar- leg or arm oh. and the bone is sticking out, I never forget that. Like, at eight, you just, I never broke a bone, ever, because of that. That movie put me on the straight path to never take risks, to lead a boring <laughs> life. <laughs> and no sodomy. That's, and especially in Utah. Like, just throwing that out there. You'll go to jail. Um, but, that, no, that movie is, like, and I, and I often wonder, like, because there's a lot of movies, if you start looking at, like, exploitation, a lot of movie about fear of the redneck. And I often have no idea where that trend starts I am somewhere you know ch- obviously Chainsaw Ma- there's films before Chainsaw Massacre it you know, started in the 30s because that's when you get oh, things really? like um, in the 30s especially uh, well that was when the Hays Codes kicked in but before that you were getting movies about like teen brides and yeah. you know things like that and they were always set Playing in that, that, that kind fear. of environment even like in the early 60s you start getting kind of the poor white trash there became this whole trend of Bayou films that came out mm. oh. Get but it, it's a uh, uh, John Borman directed. He obviously directed the probably most of your favorite horror film, Exorcist Two, uh, classic. Obviously, the heretic. <laughs> uh, but it, heretic. this is a master heretic, whatever. Uh, it's a master class in like uh, filmmaking, but also tension. Like even though my other picks more of a straight horror film. But, you know, what scares you when you're young isn't always uh, traditionally a horror film. I, had I seen Chainsaw Massacre then, which I hadn't until much later, uh, I'm sure it would have done the same thing because it's dangerous. And movies, that's the thing I miss about this genre in general is when you're watching a horror film, I, I haven't seen the trailer. If you listen to the show, you know I haven't seen the trailer to Hereditary because I'm hoping it's going to have that kind of a buzz. Mm. But where you don't know where a film's going and it's going to take you somewhere that you can't expect from a trailer where you've already seen every beat outline for you I mean, with deliverance you're just it's a bunch about these guys trying to get together for one last weekend and then unfortunately they call the driver brothers uh and they and they go down this lake and it becomes all about masculinity and crisis so you're just watching like these men who it, when it comes down to you can be macho 
but then they like strip that away and what's left of a man and it's like the most macho guy there is Burt Reynolds and he ends up with a broken leg and uh, you know the, 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 the chubby guy gets makes uh, has to squeal like a pig and uh, the, the, big, the guy plays a banjo and thinks he's connecting to the local people turns out you can't connect to the local people because you're not one of them and so I, I don't know that film to me it really stays with me and I think a lot of people don't discuss it in this way but it scared the hell out of me Rob uh, obvious choice, but because of how how long lasting it is, is obviously the the Exorcist from 1973. Did and you see it then, or no? No, obviously okay. it was it was more. It was, I don't know how young I was when I saw it, but it was too young. And also, I was brought up Catholic, so I went to catechism. Oh. And even just going to um, catechism kind of freaked me out because you have all these uh, elaborate statues of Christ on the cross and he's bleeding and in pain. And I'm just, I'm like, I don't know, I'm like 10 looking yeah. up at this thing like, oh my God, like that's mm, horrific. That's intense. Um, so just the, and, and just breaking it down in simplest terms as a little kid to good versus evil. And so uh, when I first saw that, um, I just, I it, actually, I mean, now I appreciate it on a much different level, but I think I've only seen it like less than 10 times in my entire life, like maybe five total. Like it had such an impact then. What I remember is how it opened my world to try to see other things in that realm. So, um, so I remember there was a live exorcism on TV. Uh, they like advertise it for like weeks on end, like tonight at the news, 11 oh, o'clock, yeah. there's going to be live exorcism. <laughs> With Geraldo. And, uh, and me and my cousin were the one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was something like that. And my little cousin and I, uh, I would always torture him by making him watch horror movies. And, we like psyched each other out. We're like, exorcist is nothing. We're going to watch this live exorcism. And, and uh, we both like chickened out. We were just like, <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, do you still want to watch it? And, yeah, oh, yeah, no, we can do it. And so we lasted like five minutes into the live exorcism. But, but ever since, it's, it's, and it's a movie I like to revisit just every couple of years. Uh, and again, like um, as you get older, every, you look at old movies in different ways depending where you are in your life. It's yeah. your life experience you bring to it. Yeah. And so most recently, I think I saw it maybe a year or two ago, they, they showed it at the New Beverly. Yeah. And I just really fell in love with um, the Father Karras character. Um, mm -hmm. um, J Jason Miller? Yeah, Jason Miller. Yeah. Jason Miller, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that's the thing. Now I'm a grown man, and I'm, I'm seeing it through his eyes right. rather than being the age of, of Reagan. And, uh, uh, yeah, it just it's still one of those films that gets me. And I, I prefer the theatrical. I don't like the – 2000? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a couple of splash splash inserts and stuff that I do yeah. like. I, yeah. I like Creepy Spider. Works okay. I don't know. I, like I think it just with. changes a little bit yeah. of the uh, pacing of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, it's just the original one is just top notch, the theatrical cut of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this is an example of the idea that you just said of what you bring to it determines whether or not it scares you. Because I've mentioned before, Exorcist did nothing for me as a kid because I my parents didn't go to church. Like, I had no idea what was going on. It was just a girl tied to a bed throwing shit. Mm -hmm. And so, out of like the movies that I watched that's, when I was a kid, that's your boiled down no. letter. Because <laughs> yeah. it was Becca throwing shit. And now I love The Exorcist because I appreciate it on a filmmaking level and I appreciate, you know, the suspense and things like that. But like if you'd asked me when I was like 12, Exorcist 3 scared the shit yeah. out of me. I agree. Exorcist so. did not. Yeah. yeah. Talk about double standards. She likes nun movies, but not priest movies. Know, yeah. <laughs> and I'm the only one with the nun movie here. I know. Oh, and good, I was thinking, yeah. nuns in Kraken? That's dead water. It's already been made. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, seriously. Um, I, I went with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> Somebody did. Finally. Thank you, Ulrich. Okay. Uh, right. No, because it, it, it it, it's a combination of things. It's, it's the kind of uh, madman-like element behind the camera. You don't necessarily – I didn't know who Toby Hoover was. I didn't know who the director was. It just worked as, a, as its own being. It felt – like a, a very dangerous film. It also felt like a, a cautionary tale as someone who was growing up. I think I saw the film in my teens and I was like, I'm never going to go on a road trip and I'm never going to go <laughs> yeah. into these places where I'm going to meet random people. It just like, it showed me that there was danger in the world and there were dangerous people in the world. And then once you got beyond those themes, it was the combination of everything that Toby Hooper brought to the table from the sound design, which mm -hmm. grates on my nerves every single time I watch it. It's very hard for me to get through the fir very first two mm -hmm. minutes of the movie where it's just the snap of the flash and then the grinding of the gears. And then you see that opening frame of um, the corpse draped over you know, the, the gravestone. And it is just so it, – and it's putrefying in the Texas sun and it's just like – oh, you're just going right out of the gate to fuck me up. I got it. It's okay. the only movie I've ever seen where you can smell it. Yeah. I can smell oh, that yeah. movie. Like it yeah. smells like rotting. And if you and did yeah. the, uh, the yeah. Universal Horror uh, oh, right, yeah. House oh, maze that they yeah. did a couple years ago, you could uh, actually it smell it too. Yeah. It was gross. But it was like, but it just <laughs> throws you straight into a pit of madness. Once you get to Marilyn Burns hunched oh, yeah. over a bucket, and they're just trying to 
hammer her in the skull with a sledgehammer and failing because grandpa's frail arms cannot hold the weight of the sledgehammer. Yeah. I, you just like, you're, you're just shaking your head because Toby's camera's just lingering on that. Mm-hmm. And you're just watching them go over and over with repetition. And you're like, Oh my God, please just get it over with. Just hit her in the head. <laughs> yeah. Let the, put this poor girl out of her misery. And then what he does so well, is she smashes through the window and continues running. You're like, mm-hmm. Oh, thank God. Okay. All right, I want you to live now. Go live. And then you, Leatherface is chasing after you. are like, oh, God, no, we're just going to go back to this. Now, what I've noticed, though, is, mm-hmm. which is really interesting, is that Toby knew where to end the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, she is running. I think any other filmmaker today, I, tr- I think they try to emulate that scene. The, the final girl runs, and then the, the um, antagonist chases after her, and then they catch up to her, and then they bring her back for more horror. Yeah. And it's like, no, cut. Like, I think... Everybody tries to go too, too far when they need to understand that Toby demonstrated like a surgical precision with the suspense mm-hmm. and the terror. Yeah. And uh, I think everybody needs to look at that film before. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's recaptured film. that ending. Elric no. and I got to see the 40th anniversary screening in Los Angeles oh, yeah. where it's they beautiful. did a new like 7.1 sound mix and yeah. they restored the whole thing. And what I remember, we were sitting there and at that very ending when he's you know doing his chainsaw dance, that chainsaw in 7.1 is so fucking loud. Yeah. And it's like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the abrupt cut to black. Yeah. And you just have to sit there for a minute. You're like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that was, was something. That style of ending, though, it was such a 70s device. I'd even say it went back a little bit further to Rosemary's Baby, where it's like this postmodern ending of they have lived, but at what cost? Mm. And most... It's something that we just don't see today. I don't know if people are as comfortable with it. There's um, um, the that great book. Uh, Kim Newman has a book called Nightmare Cinema. And, mm-hmm. it, yeah. and that's what it makes me think of is this idea the nightmare doesn't end and those movies are the ones that haunt you yeah. because right. there's no closure to a guy swinging his dick right. like that that right. is frightening yeah, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> this is like a giant you know uh, Elric knows uh, he's been reading Carol Clover now I didn't right, drink that much last night but, I was sober <laughs> it's fine but what's interesting is that you know I after watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre I'd been like so shaken by it um, that for years after, you know, I would kind of dip into it, but I had not seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. So the em- the, <laughs> yeah, the memories of Grandpa and the and the Hitchhiker and Leatherface, you know, they stuck with me and the cook. And then I saw Texas Chainsaw 2, and I was like, oh, these are just like businessmen. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm okay with this. They're, they're kind of fun. <laughs> they gotta and, it, and it completely like desensitized me to those, those, those characters. Um, but uh, yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is probably right behind Black Christmas for me is like the scariest movie I'd ever seen. Wow. wow. And before we delve into the 80s, let's just do a quickie, another, yeah, something else, like yeah. a runner up. Because yeah. for me, it's a movie I didn't see. I saw it as an adult, and I think I've only seen it once. Uh, and that's Don't Look Now from mm-hmm. 1973. That's mine too. Yeah, because honestly, oh. and, and I didn't think, it, I was at an age where I didn't think I could be scared by anything anymore. And I watched that film, and again, I have vague memories of it, but there is one moment where I guess it's like a reveal that scared the shit out of me. Like, the, well, it's the, the, it's the exact ending. And like, uh, I've only had, you know, those cliches like, oh, I, you know, was uh, biting my nails or my jaw dropped. Uh, the only time I was actually biting my nails was uh, a couple uh, green room. Green room. Afterwards, yeah. I looked down at my hand and I had been biting my nails mm. unconsciously. But don't look now. When that ending and it's the last couple minutes happened, I literally it was like jaw dropped. Mm-hmm. Like because what what he's able to do that director in that film, it's dread from frame one to the last frame. So you're feeling this dread, dread, dread. So it's not like necessarily scary, but it's like this mesmerizing spell you're in, and then they hit you with one thing. What, that one is so image incredibly that shocking and scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like, it, and, ooh, and, and we're not going to ruin it because I hope some people haven't seen. It, but it really is. It's an amazing film about like not listening to your intuition. You know mm-hmm. what happens if you don't follow your intuition it's an incredible movie and I didn't put on my but because you picked the one another one you could do a Donald Sutherland double with Invasion of Body Snatchers yeah. oh, the remake yeah. and I think those two are, have similar feelings the yeah, way you feel about them do. also pretty scary yeah um, so my runner up I'd say is Messiah of Evil uh, I love that um, you're welcome Code Red yeah. um, so <laughs> no there's um, a couple of sequences I want the story overall is pretty um, it's like nightmare logic so it doesn't have a 100% solid yeah. plot that you can like go it's carnival style. It's, yeah, yeah, it's Carnival of Souls-ish. Yeah. But there are several, it's the, the sequences, the set sequences yeah. in it, the one in the grocery store, the one in the theater. There are just so many sequences in it that are just downright chilling. Yeah, especially because you don't know where these movies come from. Like, right. like the best thing we do on our show, I don't know how you guys feel, but anytime we have someone a little older than us, it is so exciting when these guys have seen 
these movies in theaters before there's any hype. So when we get the oh chance gosh, to say, yeah. like we had somebody who was so psycho in a theater, or with Bill Mosley talking about when he saw a chainsaw in a in a theater at yeah. a drive-in for the first time, that feeling of hitting something that you have no idea what to expect, is right. it's, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. I just had uh, Black Christmas and Jaws behind yeah. the, but, and I say Black Christmas, I mean, like, it's, it's personal preference in terms of what I would turn to because I feel like Black Christmas has, um, Texas Chainsaw has a little bit more of an edge over it for being really unpredictable and being this kind of really raw, scrappy film. Mm -hmm. Black Christmas is more polished. You know, you're recognizing these actors. You, you, you know, the performances are a little cleaner. Um, but what Bob Clark did uh, in all of those kind of moments of drama and humor, too, because there's a lot of humor in Black Christmas, um, is just really ratchet up the tension and the dread. And it builds into that one moment that Gary Pullen did so well in his artwork um, on, on, on the Black Christmas poster is that eyeball through the doorway. That is, uh, I, I think I've recounted it on the show, but I was dating this girl in college and I was working at Blockbuster Video and I rented Black Christmas uh, during December. And um, she had passed out next to me in my dorm room. And I was watching the movie and that happened. And I leapt <laughs> out of the bed <laughs> and was like, oh, shit. And my mouth was like over, my, my hand was over my mouth. And she screamed yeah. because she thought something, somebody was like breaking into her room or something. And she was like, what are you doing? I was like, watching Black Christmas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. We had a little a little little debrief that morning at breakfast. She yeah. was like, "Can you just tell me about this movie that terrified you?" And I think <laughs> wow. she watched it. Later and again, on, no closure. There's no closure. No to closure. These movies. Yeah. Like, these yeah. closure. You go home and you have to. It's gonna fuck with you. Yeah. So you yeah. Keep doing it. Yeah. So. And Jaws. Jaws speaks for itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that movie is just yeah. amazing. Master. All right. Masterful. So that's all pretty much before we were even uh, old enough to watch these movies. Or so. 70s, yeah. yeah. 80s let's, baby. Let's get to the decade of damage. I just got a sneak peek of Becca. I just got a sneak peek of a sneak peek of Becca's. Oh no. Man. Uh, oh, I'll, no. I'll lead us off on the 80s. Yeah, do it. Uh, well, I, you know, I mean, this it's obvious. I'll just say it in passing, but Nightmare on Elm Street is the movie that fucked me up yep. and got me into the horror genre. Yeah. And I know a lot of people. But the reason, you know, I, I've talked about it enough on the show, and so you can go back to past episodes if you want to hear how my cousins forced me to watch it and told me Freddy Krueger was going to get me. And so uh, I'm going for, and then you'll see a theme here, uh, I'm going for one that I've also only seen once. I own it on Blu-ray. I've been scared to watch it since I was a little kid. Uh, but it just came up because uh, uh, I was ta basically I was having this conversation with uh, my friend Brie Grant, who is a huge horror fan, and she had never seen this movie, so I literally just lent it to her, and it's The Entity from mm. 1982. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And so all I remember about this, because there was The Exorcist, where it's the little girl getting you know possessed by the devil. And then I still don't remember exactly what's in The Entity other than Barbara Hershey repeatedly getting raped by ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> And not being able to do anything about it, and and when it happens, and I, she's a mom, with and two, yeah. two, a single mom with kids. Did you so understand like when brutal. you first saw it what was happening? Because I didn't. I just yeah. yes, I was yeah. fairly well because there's all the like you see these like invisible the indentations, indentations yeah. of what they're doing yeah. to her. So creepy. And and you know I, I was just I just understood what it was. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, I think they say either the beginning or the end based on a true story. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, holy shit, that happened to a woman? And, and Because it also has no real resolution from what I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it affected me so badly that I have never revisited it. And, and I'm a little scared to revisit it, not because I'm scared of it, but because I'm scared it won't hold up. <laughs> <laughs> the, fir so that, the first half memory? still is as yeah, good as you remember. The first half is really the second good. second half is more of an investigative procedural. Yeah. It's just not the same. Yeah. And, yeah. And it feels the like a Michael Creighton movie. Different, yeah, totally different. And there is a gentleman, I think I, th I think there's an actor that plays him in the movie, but the guy that investigated the real entity is uh, uh, Barry Taff, who is technically a real Ghostbuster, and he wrote a book on it and all that stuff. And a few years ago, uh, I interviewed him for a friend as a favor for a documentary, and some weird shit happened in the room, and I was really? like, I don't want to be around this guy because he dealt with. He was one step away from the real entity, mm. uh, and and yeah, like our candle fell over, like weird shit was just happening <laughs> while we talked to him. So he was telling us really spooky stories, and then venting about how his script for Superman for the Quest for Peace it wasn't used. <laughs> so he's he's got a lot of issues in, in multiple <laughs> ways. But anyway, do you remember the moment in Nightmare that scared you the most? Like, can you remember back then when you were actually watching it for the first oh, time? Oh, God. I, I think uh, Tina's death was – I mean, I, it was That's the two – the one-two punch of, like, her pulling his face off, which uh -huh. I guess kind of looks goofy now in retrospect. But as a little kid, you're like, holy shit, you know, like – and then just the idea of, of her repeatedly, like, getting torn apart on the ceiling yeah. and mm -hmm. her boyfriend screaming and not being able to do anything about it. Like, as a little kid, you're just like, I, just, I can't process what just happened. 
You know, so yeah, yeah that, I think that was the one that really pushed me over the edge. Yeah, did, did I'll, I'll follow up. Young? Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. is mine. Uh, yeah. Is my top choice. Um, it was it, just to recount really quick. I, I didn't see Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I listened to the entire thing, <laughs> all ninety-five minutes or uh, you know, hundred minutes of it, because my parents rented a VCR and they decided to watch it that night and <laughs> sent me to my room. And to defy them, I cracked the door open and I just sat by the door and listened to the entire film play out. And it was the most nightmarish thing I'd ever heard in my life, <laughs> uh, because I didn't know who Freddy Krueger was. I didn't know what a cackling was. And every once in a while, there was like a goat nail sound <laughs> and I was just like oh my god what is going on um, but I feel like out of the 80s that was the one film where you had peak Wes Craven mm -hmm. masterful tension and scares nightmarish imagery and it was the conceptually out of the 80s the one film that I think did it right by um, targeting when you're at your most vulnerable which is when you're sleeping you know, I mean, like there was, I mean, Wes, you know, hats off to the guy for going, oh, when are you your most memorable? When you're, you know, when you're down for the count, you yeah. know, and, 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 you're, and you're in your dream state. And I think he created the ultimate boogeyman. J you know, Freddy Krueger is amazing. Um, yeah, and it was just from a personal from space too, like his personal memory of oh, creating yeah. that. Yeah. You see it, you know? Yeah. It's, 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 it's really, really well done. And just um, in terms of like big studio filmmaking, um, I mean, it wasn't big it was a, it was a low budget film at the time yeah. but uh in terms of something coming out of hollywood and scaring the shit out of you that was top notch i find it interesting that we all had like a weird not straight viewing of that film like it's not like you just <laughs> no. rented it like for me and i've told on the show before it would it'd probably be my one but i've got one other one but uh the, the people invited me to watch it i went over they had just rented it but they had just watched it and they they all pretended like they hadn't just watched it <laughs> so as soon as i think he's in silhouette with his hand out and somebody like jumped on me and I I mean, I almost literally wet myself. That was how scary <laughs> it was. And I would have been so freaking humiliated. But, but it stayed with you because every all the imagery then, even cat, you know, Caterpillar in the Mouth, this is stuff we hadn't really seen oh, yeah. before. No, my, my yeah. cousins, like, for weeks told me, Freddy Krueger's going to get you. And I'm yeah. like, who's that? That's fucked like, up. The, par the parents burned him and he's uh, going to come yeah. out. Like, so I kind of knew everything going into it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't ready. Yeah, wow. So. I didn't pick up the Elm Street um, franchise until probably three or so. And by that time, Freddie oh, had I become... I three what? years old. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, when no, I got three... No, no, no. Three. Part three. That's Dream Warriors. Really oh, um, oh, Dream oh, Warriors. <laughs> no, I didn't pick it up till Dream Warriors. Um, like, I started with Dream Warriors. Okay. And so by the time I, I came to it, Freddie was already a stand-up comedian. Yeah. And so then I saw, you know, five, six. And then I doubled back. So I was much older when I saw the... Well, yeah. at least like a teenager yeah. when I saw the first one. So I think we should come up with Shockwaves Babies, like Muppet Babies. Muppet yeah. Babies. And it's just all little versions of ourselves. And Becca's just like, I saw Nightmare on Elm Street. Not till later. <laughs> Do you want to go? Elric's over, over here going, I love tentacle got? porn. Yeah, tentacle porn. <laughs> I do. Uh, for me, uh, tentacle that porn? was different. Yeah, tentacle porn. Uh, that was one, but the one that, like, um, nothing has, nothing, no movie I think has probably scared me more with its imagery than uh, Toby Hooper's Poltergeist. That, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know it's controversial coming from us, but I'm sticking with Toby Hooper's <laughs> Poltergeist down here in Texas. <laughs> All that, yeah, that's you, that you, you in particular, pal. <laughs> uh, you know what? This I, I wrote in my notes. I wrote this was my exorcist because uh, mm -hmm. because uh, we because not being raised Catholic, uh, even though I still think Exorcist is a very scary movie anyway. But uh, what it did is it actually took the elements that are familiar to a Catholic that made that scare the shit out of them. It took those uh, that iconography and then did it with the suburbs, which is what we all knew, and it made things scary. Uh, the clown's scary. The housing district is scary. Uh, chairs suddenly being on a table. Domestic, domestic imagery. Death of a pet. Death of a pet. Yeah. yeah. And suddenly these things became like things that we all knew. Like if you can make the static at the end of the night scary, then you've got us. And, and none of us were scared of that before. Mm -hmm. Like people, it's hard to remember before the horror movies. Like people weren't scared of the water. People weren't scared of the static on their TV. And now you can never undo some of that. So that film to me, uh, you know, it's obviously a real combination of t a couple people's vision. That's what's interesting about it, because mm -hmm. you got the kind of high effects where you can see Spielberg's touch, but then there's just so much gritty and like kind of just kind of like Chainsaw, where it's this big slick studio movie, but it's a dangerous slick studio yeah. movie. Yeah. Like like rotting yeah. corpses coming out, the guy's flesh rotting. Man, there was so much in that movie that, and 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 ultimately, what I'm really coming down to is the clown. The is clown. the scariest thing it's I've ever seen clown. in my life. <laughs> yeah, like the arms coming at you, me. wrapping around you. The I was tree. that little boy in that moment. You mine, know? Yeah, mine was oh, the, the tree because well, yeah. I had a tree right outside my bedroom window and yeah. when the wind would blow, it would actually tap and that was terrifying when the tree actually came through. Now oh, yeah. that was one that I saw like you watched um, Elm Street where my parents, God bless them, bootlegged every damn VHS we rented until <laughs> the invention <laughs> of Copy Guard. Um, so they would set up the two VHS 
uh, players and they copied everything until Coffee Guard stopped them. Um, so they were actually co they were bootlegging Poltergeist before. Um, and I remember peeking out of my bedroom window and watching the entire thing. Yeah. And I was I would who super did the young. actual thunder count. Like the stone oh, count. Oh, yeah. I actually oh, sure, did that. Yeah. Whenever whenever I laid in bed, that movie gave me the like the count in between the lightning strikes and the thunder. I just laid in bed and I did that all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't want no fucking tree in my window. <laughs> yeah, it's a scare. So that was yours as well, Poetry. That was yeah, my number one. So instead of that one, I will go with Watcher in the Woods, oh. which is um, – so have people seen that? Making sure it's yeah. not out of nowhere. Dis Disney? Yeah, Disney. So um, in the 80s, Disney decided the to kind terrifying of – terrifying things, Disney. Yeah, they <laughs> decided to take this weird little foray into scarier material, and they did um, Escape to Witch Mountain. They did Black, Black Hole. Hole. Black yeah, Hole. Black Hole, really yeah. yeah. Um, and Watcher in the yeah. Woods. And Watcher in the Woods kind of looked like a kid's film because it had kid's protagonist, but Betty Davis was in there and um, it was about these kids who were doing this like play I'll call it like light as a feather stiff as a board but like the 1950s version it looked like monkey in the middle but I don't know exactly the logistics of the I game all of that. Um, <laughs> no they were like they put some girl in the middle they blindfolded her and she was spinning around and then they were like saying these incantations and she disappears and then like 20 years later two kids move into the house and she's trying to communicate with them and Betty Davis her mom is still there and it was just the whole thing was terrifying and there was this scene and remember this was like marketed towards kids um there's this scene where one of the kids becomes possessed with her spirit and she writes her name backwards mm. on the window and it was like the five-year-old version of red rum mm. and it, she's saying it she's like neric because it was karen backwards <laughs> it is horrifying so yeah that movie it definitely messed me yeah. up pretty bad it's a good one yeah Couple um, did you do backups. I did not. Well, Nightmare on Elm Street is mine. Yeah. My, ba my backup would be Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good. Again, not my go to movie that I would watch on a Thursday night. <laughs> uh, do you have a good date story about that one? I do. <laughs> actually, oh, I do. oh, yes. Uh, you take a date to Henry? I, 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 no, no. She, she requested uh, I bring Henry over. Oh. And I said, oh, I'll bring it. <laughs> um, she was like, I want to wow. see the, the, the gnarliest thing that you've ever watched recently. And I was like, oh, let me show you. And it did not go well, yeah. um, especially when Otis and Henry were getting frisky with a, girl, a woman, which is a terrifying scene. Um, yeah. And I remember I had my arm around her, we're watching the movie, and then she kind of just was like, I'm going to get some water. Yeah. She got, and got water. Um, but hey, she wanted to see it. Um, but Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, um, I guess it's just kind of like a running theme with stuff that just terrifies me, which is, you know, these films that are done on a really gritty, almost documentarian level mm -hmm. um, that kind of shed a light on the darkness of mankind, you know? I mean, like, you've got this serial killer, Henry, who has a, a, a moral code that no one else lives by. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, he, he, he has his own rules and... And 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 then his crazy buddy Otis, based on you know real people. Um, but I think it's just the way that uh, I'm blanking on the director. Oh, oh, John McNaughton. John yeah. McNaughton. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know the way he documented these men's lives. Um, you know, and humanized not, without just saying. Well, no, what I was going to say. Villains. Yeah, exactly. Taking yeah. us into a breakfast scene with these two men. Yeah. And, and he, humanizing him. And then, of course, Otis crosses the line. And yeah. then, you know, Henry is like, no, 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 don't do that. You and know. then Henry's kind of like, by the end, he's like Jaws. Yeah. Like, the, like he's like <laughs> a shark he's that just looks well, the at thing situations is, in this way. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, it's a, and it's a mind game watching this movie, too, because you kind of like Henry a little bit yeah. because he does have a little bit of a code, um, because he's not willing to go that that far as Otis would it's just the, like the levels of evil and that when you when a movie asks you to kind of assess that and s take a side almost like you want to see Otis die mm -hmm, like you yeah. want a Henry versus Otis battle and you want to see him go down and then at the you know and then in the last act you know Henry can run off and actually probably enjoy a good life but <laughs> he doesn't yeah. <laughs> you know the darkness catches up to him and he makes a choice and you're just like you're just left with this you know this punch to the gut but through that film I mean it did terrify me I mean like just because I I lived in the big city and mm -hmm. and you know it's just like I'm, I could be walking by a serial killer any day now you know and it yeah. was really smart filmmaking because McNaughton went out of his way at the beginning to establish that Henry was the killer but they never link the two together because for the first several killings they will show Henry with the girl then they will show her corpse and then Henry over mm. here but you never see it together or you'll see the guy with the guitar you'll see his corpse and then you'll see Henry with right. the guitar right. but you yes. never actually yeah. see him doing the damage yeah. for a while so it really kind of humanizes him and separates him from it before you actually see it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Have you ever seen Henry II? No. 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 I chose, chose not to. Yeah, I watched it a couple of years ago, actually. Killer, I was man. curious. Well, you know, I, I read some, <laughs> I'm sure it's very accurate information from Wikipedia that uh, Rooker would have done it, maybe, yeah. if he didn't have some sort of conflict. But it, it's actually, it's, it's, it's pretty gnarly, not very good. It's, it's mm. almost like a redo, uh, just, it, just as mean-spirited, but without the craft part of it. Yeah. And so it, it's, just, it's just a gnarly cash and sequel, yeah. unfortunately. I find it really interesting what scares I remember a meeting, I think it was uh, Landis a long time ago when he did his book on monsters, and he talked about his wife, who, which reminded me of you, which is some people are just terrible. They can watch anything supernatural, but anything about real life, like uh, home invasions, uh, rape, serial killers, they can't watch it because it's so scary to them, and I feel the complete opposite. For some, for some reason, I feel like with those kind of things, like if a serial killer is going to get me, I'm like, oh, whatever, they're going to get me. I can't stop that, so yeah. fuck it. But for some reason, ghosts and shit like really scare me, even though I don't even know if I believe even but it. you can stop the ghost. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen you know, the Christ, the body of whatever. Well, like, yeah, uh, the, bo- the body of whatever. Body of something. <laughs> the body, that ghost I'm not is Catholic. down. Sorry, yeah. the body of I'm from New gone. Zealand. We don't have religion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Jedi is uh, uh, saying. Uh, but <laughs> we do. No, no. Um, it's, it's, yeah. like, it's like Jason or Michael Myers. Like, like you're probably not going to survive. But it's a dude. You yeah. can try. Yeah, yeah. Like ghosts, there's no, uh, there's no rules. There's, you're yeah. probably It's gonna, unknowable. I, yeah, I like the thing that's unknowable back. and you d- wouldn't even know what to do except for cliches. Mm. Uh, I have a really stupid one now that feels really silly, but at the time I was the scare. Like this one moment in this movie scared the bejesus out of me, was, which was um, uh, Steve Miner's house. Uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I, view that as a, I view it as a comedy now, but I swear to God, when that woman came out of that weird, ugly, monstrous woman, I like just couldn't even handle it. Yeah. I was so scared. And then, of course, Big Ben's terrifying, too, when he comes. Mm-hmm. But there's something about that woman. I couldn't even think about her like for a couple years, and then I went back well, to watch it. Well, her voice, too. Her little yeah. warbly voice. And then the yeah. hand. It, and then I watch yeah. it now, and it's almost Evil Dead 2, like, funny. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. at the time, that movie just scared me, and it's yeah. just kind of silly when I, when I think that. And I, and I have to just mention, because we haven't talked about it, uh, for me, The Shining is the movie that actually changed my life in terms of m- how I love movies, but yeah. I don't know if it was scary or if it was just like a spell. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I, like, the, the old lady in the tub spell. is the... the, the yeah, the tub. Yeah. Like, yeah, the tub. Yeah, that but stuck with me that, That's a movie from start to end. You're in this guy's magic spell mm-hmm. yeah. of, of just bringing you in. You know what? Film. We never actually touched on this uh, a couple episodes back. Ready Player One. Who saw Ready Player One? Uh, I still haven't I mean, seen it. I mean, yeah, you guys, I'm, I'm shocked you guys haven't seen it. The Shining yeah. I know, stuff I did. I that. loved it. But it I don't want to spoil no. any of that. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about spoiling it, but we never, we never recognized it as something that happened in cinema. Yeah. And I think it's incredible what they went through because to <laughs> now doing the Halloween stuff and going f- through all the right stuff, yeah. Ryan I Tarek, can imagine... Ryan Tarek, producer of the new Halloween film. Quiet. Um, <laughs> Where's the trailer? To, Where's the trailer, To go through... The rights and the level of detail um, in that. I mean, like, I had, I mean, like, I just applauded that scene. You guys have to yeah, see it. No, I, see I, it I, we can talk I generally about agree it. with you, and, and without spoiling it, there, there is an inc- like an incredible homage to Kubrick's The Shining. Yeah, it's amazing. That, mm-hmm. That's it's it's almost like jaw dropping. That's yes. a giant blockbuster of that caliber. You're like, wait, mm-hmm. we're gonna stay here for a while? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, yeah. Spielberg owed it. it to him for yeah. dropping the ball in his other uh, Kubrick homage called AI. <laughs> <laughs> dropped the ball big time, in my opinion. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. all right. What, what are your other background? I got I got some other ones. Um, Pin. I saw Pin oh, way yeah. too young. Thanks. Yeah, that wow, one. A couple Canadians here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one destroyed me when I first Plastic saw nightmare. it. Yeah. Plastic nightmare. Um, Lady in White was another one um, where it's like this bucolic <laughs> movie that I almost... We appreciate the one guy that I appreciate that one. Lady in White, man. Um, I almost found it boring. Like, I was, I was remember being like, yeah, maybe I'll turn this off. I'm just hanging here. And then it gets nuts. And so that one definitely um, did it. Dolls was a big one for me um, as well, just because they were dolls. And the movie in general was pretty terrifying for me as a kid. But um, the deep cut I'll give here is hard to find. It is VHS only. Uh, so dust off your players. 1989, there's this film that came out called Sound of Silence. Sounds of Silence, I believe. Has that, was that Art Garfunkel? No. <laughs> okay. Just no. Has like anyone in here seen Sounds of Silence? Okay, it is. Um, it's it's worth the hunt. It is VHS wow, only, no one? and no one. it is about um, parents, uh, t- uh, dad and mom, and their um, deaf son who purchase a rundown orphanage. And when they get there, um, there are ghosts, but only the little boy can sense them and see them. But he's deaf, and he has problems communicating it to his parents. And uh, it's definitely 
a terrifying deep cut that is worth the hunt. Turk, is this a real movie? Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> no. It, did she just make no, this no, up? No, no, no. believe her. <laughs> because I'm the, I'm the one with the best memory here on uh, the Shockwaves. Okay. She talked about this many episodes ago yeah. and said, it's either the sounds of silence or the, the sound, sound of, of silence. silence. I don't uh, know. I don't know. And we still can't figure and it out. And I still haven't figured it out. And I own it. So I, I'm just going to... Bring the VHS I'm, in. I'm looking at yeah. it. Let's watch I'm it. Pulling it up. But the 80s were magic, weren't they? They were. I thought horror. there was more. I, I, thought there was, uh, I thought there was less scary stuff and yeah. just more fun more horror. Fantasy yeah, horror. I more fantasy horror. More, yeah. more fun. But horror. so much. Fun. But 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 thanks to Disney, there were yeah. moments of pure terror. I mean, <laughs> yes. like the end of Black Hole. The end of the Black Hole yeah. still sticks with me. Maximilian, yeah. like standing on the mountaintop, like fucking Satan. Uh, it's just like, <laughs> oh my god. And then there's another great moment. Um, who remembers Dragon Slayer? Oh yeah. Dragon Slayer is great. Yeah, uh, Vermithrax is the greatest dragon of all time. Fuck you, Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> no, no, Vermithrax Verm- Verm- is pretty badass. But there's a moment in Dragon Slayer where uh, this village offers up this girl as a sacrifice to the dragon. And our hero goes into the dragon's cave to rescue this woman and hopefully slay the dragon. And the dragon had babies. Uh, and he finds the, like, the girl, and she's laying there. Yeah. And the dragon babies are feasting on her slowly, Ooh. and it and you can see her foot, her leg, and then her foot way over here, and the baby's just munching on it. And you know, when the movie came out, it was like seven years old, and I was like, "Oh my god, what is going on?" It was it was like pure terror, but that was a family outing, mm-hmm. that kind of movie. Yeah. You know, you wanted to go and see some spectacle and. Go see like Lady Hawk and stuff like that, you know. That's that kind of lumped in with us. Oh, Lady Hawk fans. Yeah. Um, Return yeah. to Oz. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What are those things called? Wheelers. 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 Yeah. Princess Mombi, that dude who ate people but was allergic to eggs. Yeah, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on. Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. I loved that movie. <laughs> so we were at. <laughs> Fucked up. I was at a um, a convention in. Oh, gosh. It was um, in Long Island. It was a comic convention in Long Island. And Sean Astin was there. And I brought my copy of the Garbage Pail Kids movie and the Willies <laughs> for him to sign. And, uh, yeah. McK- well, Mackenzie. Mackenzie was in. in a, both of them were there. Sean, so yeah, I brought yeah, those there. two. And he was like, Garbage, Garbage Pail Kids movie? Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, no, you're signing it. So I don't know yeah. why I know that Mackenzie and Austin McKenzie. is the star of Garbage Pail Kids. Because <laughs> he's <laughs> awesome in it. He plays Dodger. Bootleg copies you're getting signed. Yeah. No, no, those were, those were legit. I was okay. I was living in New York on my own by that time. Okay. I, I oh, bought tapes. So. I just remembered. There's oh. another one. This per- actually pertains to one of the guests. Billy Zane getting attacked by a critter in Critters. Hey, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That scared oh, yeah. the shit out of me. Yeah. Huh. Like he was like he was just hanging out in a bar with his girlfriend, and the yeah. critter just like I remember he goes for his stomach. Yeah. And he's holding this little fur ball, and I was just imagining like how yeah. deep that thing was burrowing into him. That's scary. Yeah. That was scary to me. Sounds of Silence with an S from 1989. Check out those pictures. It's a fucking terrifying movie. All right, I guess we believe you. Oh, yeah. 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 That exists. It. it exists. It looks like Sinister. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and don't forget Cujo. Cujo. Uh, I think when you're a kid, that's a really scary movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was going to say American Werewolf for me because it took mm-hmm. me several... Uh, I, I just looked it up. It's To me... Michael Jackson's Thriller was a big gateway because yeah. I was seven years old when that happened. And it was also the first time I saw like a making of where you saw Rick Baker doing these effects and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But they showed a snippet of American Werewolf in London in the making of Thriller, mm. which is actually the whole um, Piccadilly circus scene. Uh, Subway. Uh, so, so, yeah. 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 Uh, no, basically when pure chaos. Yeah. And I think it was the most violent thing I'd ever seen at seven years old because it's like one guy like flies out of the bus and then gets run over when, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, and so after that, I was like, well, I need to see that movie. Uh, <laughs> and it literally took me several attempts. I'd watch it and then when um, uh, Griffin Dunn's character gets eaten, I, was, I turned it off. I was like, oh my God, because it was so violent. Mm. And then I made it up until when David has the nightmare sequence and yeah. he's like... <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's yeah. amazing how like a, a movie can have that many tones and work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like yeah. it's so funny. And then when you have this nightmare sequence, like straight out of a Benoit movie, it's it fucking terrifying. Mm-hmm. Nazi werewolves suddenly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's to me Landis's ability to juggle tones is pretty remarkable. Now. Twilight Zone the movie. The oh intro- my the god! Introduction, yeah. the, the introduction of Twilight Zone oh, yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to see something really scary? scary? No, yeah. girl with Ooh. the no mouth. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh yeah. No, yeah. and um, again, granted, this is a kids' movie, but it, it messed me up. Never ending story. Oh yeah. I will still, if anyone mentions our text, I will still cry my eyes out and yeah. fuck is that, that the wolf. Horse? Yeah, yeah. The wolf is that's terrifying. the wolf. That's oh yeah. my god, that was the saddest scene. That's probably the first time I've yeah. cried in a movie. I like, think Evan Dixon. Our wolf. text rounds. Too. Somebody put uh, someone tweeted out to Twitterverse. It was like, what's the uh, what's the 
one on-screen death, you're still not over. And Evan Dixon just put the horse in the quicksand, and I was like, <laughs> "Mud, oh my god, mud, he's oh, in yes. the swamp." Yeah, <laughs> so sad. I can't and also, uh, I have to the go. witch in Crawl 3D. <laughs> if you watch the 3D version, the witch, the witch? is scary. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Cries and the and with the with the spider, Ooh. Flash the, Gordon. The, Oh really? Flag, really? No, when he sticks his hand into the the bog, yeah, and there's uh, like this kind of bulbous uh, thing with a stinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like Timothy Dalton's like, I could do this, and I was like, Yeah. You <laughs> Eyeball get it. eating monster and Deathstalker. <laughs> no one Deathstalker. Quiet come again. on, oh. Deathstalker. Come on. You know what? I want to put this out to the crowd and anybody who's listening. There's one film that I remember watching on WPIX Channel 11, um, and it was a film about a creature that would. Like pull a piece of your vertebrae or your brain stem out, but it only that's what it ate. It ate like a very fine thread inside your brain. And it's not brain brain. damage. No, 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 it's not that. It was like it was like it wasn't the being, but there was this one movie, and I remember a girl in a garage in some city, and this monster came up to her, and her boyfriend was coming down to find her, and he just found like her laying on the ground with her back all torn up because the creature had just pulled that one little sliver of brain out. And I, huh. and to this day, I still can't find what it is. Is it like an it's Outer kinda, Limits episode? Maybe? No, it was a full movie. Wow. It was like, it was like, it was like, it was like on the level of the being where it was just a kind of a scrappy B movie monster movie from the eighties. And I still, and then in the nineties you get the relic doing the hypothalamus. <laughs> or, uh, yeah. Which is kind of funny. Oh, the relic. All right. Well, nineties. Just taking us to the nineties. We, we have entered nineties. Well, the problem with the, with the, so the difference now as viewers though is like now we have thick armor because the eighties is where we're kids. We're getting the shit scared of us. I feel like sure. I went into every movie in the nineties looking for that, chasing that dragon mm. with, uh, with thick armor on me. So I think it was a lot harder to be scared. Yeah. 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 For me. Maybe. All right. Well, know. let's hear where you go. Okay. Then. I'll kick it off because this one I saw unexpected, Event Horizon. Oh, yeah. um, because that shit was marketed as a sci-fi film. Um, and so I went in, sci-fi and not oriented. that I wouldn't have seen it if it was horror, but it definitely was not marketed like that. So you go in thinking it's going to be um, a sci-fi spaceship movie, and then they're eating their own hands and pulling their faces yeah. off. And yeah, I was not prepared for that. That is one that I definitely was still thinking about days later. Um, and I because it was better than it had any right to be. I know. (laughs) (laughs) I think that was the surprise going into it. I remember once the uh, main titles kicked off with an orbital. Uh, Michael Kamen score where it was just like a little techno and a little classy soundtrack. I was like, oh, we're in for a good time. And then there, it was just like a roller coaster ride of scares. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I would let it, it definitely stuck with me because like a couple days later, I was like, oh, the guy with Mortal, who did Mortal Kombat did all right on this, this time around. Yeah, it was, it was one of the first films I remember the full black scleras oh, um, yeah, in yeah. effect. And yeah, it was just, it had. But really- it scared you. Definitely, hmm. definitely. And I was like 16 by that time. So, yeah, that one definitely kind of stuck with me. That's a good flick, though. Yeah. That's that's good Sam Neill, gotta yeah. love it. Yeah. He is home. <laughs> I'm home. Uh, what are, who's going to say Candyman? I am. Okay, I'll let you well, go. Well, then I'll let you, you guys well, you start. Are, are, you guys, are you guys Candyman, too? It was my second choice. It was your second choice? Right, start with you with Candyman. Yeah, it was just definitely my first choice. I mean, like... Uh, I, I just think on, on every level the film is completely overlooked as one of the, the probably the best horror film of the 90s. Um, and it does it, what Nightmare does. It creates a real boogeyman. Bingo. A real yes. legend that you yes. buy into and you're scared. And you don't want to look in the mirror. You don't want to say those words. Exactly. And you get behind Virginia Madsen who, yep. you know, is mm-hmm. kind of, she you know, you, you emotionally connect with her because you know what her journey is and then she goes poking around where she couldn't, shouldn't go poking around and then the, the most tragic thing that could ever happen to her happens, you mm-hmm. know. And then it's still left open ended, and yet, and it's romantic. Like I can't think of any think horror got, films that have a deep romantic. There's a deep romantic. I think that com- I think the romance come. I feel I I felt more of the romance coming out of Candyman: Farewell to the Flesh more than the first film. I just really? like I feel like there's such the a pull from is. her it's to romantic. him. It's, and a Philip Glass did, score, yeah. you know. Yeah. No. Yeah. God, the Philip Glass it's score gorgeous. is amazing. But that scene where she's um, she's been admitted and Candyman comes in and just fucks up her life even further. I mean, <laughs> at that point, you knew that there were no boundaries. Like you think that. Oh, with Freddy Krueger, you just need to stay awake. With yeah. Candyman, waking, sleeping, it didn't matter. He was going to come after you. And even if you were under the protection of the police or whatever, he was going to come and find you no matter what. That, that great scene where she's talking to the doctor and Candyman just, oh, yeah. his, his hook comes right through the doctor's chest and he takes off. You're like, oh, wow. And it's able to be topical, like modern, mm-hmm. topical, looking at things, problems now, and then... And uh, still holds up today. And, yeah. t- and tying it to the past. Yeah. He is a revenge character for America's oh, yeah. past. Exactly. The yeah. bloodshed in the past. Yeah. 
flavor. It's really kind of an amazing character yeah. you know, to have yeah. that through line. Yeah. That's a great, great freaking movie. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been... That would have been Jacob's Ladder would have been probably... Yeah, Jacob's that's, Ladder. That's, okay, let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. Jacob, go ahead, go ahead. Well, Jacob's Ladder, I haven't seen it in a long time, and I actually just bought the Blu-ray. I, I want to <coughs> rewatch it uh, before probably getting into it too much, but there's scenes in that movie, uh, like we talked about a long time back on Killer POV, uh, about mind fuck cinema. Mm -hmm. Like movies that are just literally a mind fuck, uh, like a Lost Highway or that. But that film, it, you just never know where you uh, lie with that narrator. Yeah. And there's a scene on a dance floor where the woman's like dancing. The tail. With, with the guy, and yeah, the tail just oh, impales her. Yeah. So it's like when you take reality, you're watching reality, and then something surreal or horror comes into that reality. The sexual. Mm -hmm. Sexual, yeah. yeah. It's, and, and then it's, again, tied to something political. It's tied to, you know, the war. It's tied mm -hmm. to drug testing. You know, it's, yeah. I, I, I need to see it again. I, I, maybe I'll watch it in the next couple of weeks just mm -hmm. to have I remember, a fresh I think it just like ended on too much of an upbeat note. Oh, it's really? a very yeah. it, it it's not a beat ending. Well, it's such a bleak ending? movie. I thought. Well, it the, does. Uh, yeah, he, well, he comes around and yeah. I, like, I don't no, want to no, no, ruin no. it, we'll, but we'll it's, talk about it after because it's I sad. That's but it's there's a no, there's a. It's like Owl Creek Bridge, but it goes opposite. A, well, yeah. yeah, I just remember it not ending on a super dark note. No, because it is. It's really dark. We'll talk really? about that after. All right, yeah. okay. Now we have theories. Jacob's ladder panel. There are theories about Jacob's ladder. We're gonna have to have a spoiler episode. The ending fucked me up when when I first saw yes, it. Yes, yeah. I remember mm. it as being uplifting. Like mm. it was right, but if it's in if release. it's in his head, then we, yeah, you never know what's being actually played out to him. Okay, I guess it's I guess I was gonna say I think it's a matter I think it's a matter of perspective because uh -huh. once the reveal happens, then it's like where can it go? And it didn't go where I thought it wanted to go. I th didn't think it was gonna go as dark. I don't know. I just remember it going. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Revisit. Right. Revisiting. Uh, yeah. for, for me, it's The Exorcist Three. Because oh, nice. I I hmm. remember and again I had the thing with The Exorcist I hadn't seen it that much and me and my buddy Steve took the bus to the Limbrick movie theater uh, we're like probably sixteen at this point and we went to see this movie we were pumped we're like we could handle it it's you know it's The Exorcist three and there's still to this day there's one maybe two but definitely one scare that is is pretty much. Uh, uh, you can't redo it. There's there's one of the greatest jump scares of all mm -hmm. time in The Exorcist yep. 3. And just to prove it, I remember you know several years later, I had showed it to a bunch of friends on Long Island, and they had never seen it, and that moment got them. Like They all jumped off my couch, and I'm like, yes, it still works. Yeah. Uh, much like the end of Don't Look Now, yeah, um, there's, totally. there's just these little moments that, I don't know, it's just a perfect storm. Somehow the way it's um, shot and executed mm. with a little zinger like sound effect or whatever, uh, but no, Exorcist 3, I think, is a worthy sequel. And so to me, it's 1, 3, and the TV show. And I think one of the reasons 1 and 3, it worked. <laughs> second so season. Second season is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, not, not number 2. But number 1 and 3, it's, it's saying, I because I, I delved into um, uh, Ninth Configuration recently for the uh, for the other show. And what I really learned by doing that was how William Peter Blatty is a true believer. Oh, and right. I think that's what you see in Exorcist 1 and 3. You see a guy who really believes this. So, and, that's, and we talked about the new documentary by Friedkin where he filmed an exorcism. Uh, and what matters isn't like whether you believe in heaven mm -hmm. or hell. It, what matters is they do. And so they really believe they're possessed and they believe they can be unpossessed by a priest. And I feel like Blatty puts that into those movies where each is, it feels real. Whereas another director could have made that same thing and I think it would have felt like bullshit. Like yeah. number two. Like I don't think Borman felt that. You know what I mean? And so I don't know. I, I, think, that's, I think that's super important with uh, belief, what you buy into with mm -hmm. a movie. That's why, why these movies, a lot of the movies we're talking about are movies that ground a character as real. Yeah. We feel for them yep. and then yep. you take us into a horror thing rather than, oh, we need a horror, a horror scene in the first two minutes yeah. to catch the audience. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, yeah. generic. Today. Today's filmmaking. Well, I'm going to throw yeah. out a completely unreal character in unreal scenarios. Oh, okay. House Sorry. on Haunted Hill, the 90s uh -huh. one. Oh, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, when that Bill, first... Bill Malone's movie? Well, that's Bill a Malone. super fun movie. Yeah. yeah, it's super fun. I mean, nothing in it is in any way uh -huh. believable. Um, but it scared the crap out of me when I saw it in the theater. It was one of those things. I just wasn't expecting it to kind of push as far as it did. And when Jeffrey Combs' character shows up, and they shoot it in, I'll call it twitchy cam. Mm -hmm. It was one of the first times I'd seen that done. They actually used the twitchy, and you're, I mean, you're literally just dropping frames and editing, but they'd used it on Jacob's Ladder. was probably mm -hmm. the first time I became aware of it. But they used it for walking in House on Haunted Hill. Yeah. And I, holy shit. And then he did the speed walk thing, yeah. and that that's just cool. it blew my yeah, mind. Yeah, the first time you do something, anything like that, you've mm -hmm. got the audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's um, a fun one. It was really impressive. I was going to say Ring. Huh? Japanese Ring. <gasps> yep. Twitchy oh, cam. Yeah, yeah that came out in the 90s, late yeah. 90s, but yeah. it's really, really well done. And I remember mm -hmm. seeing a bootleg copy of that film, and that scared the shit out of me. I mean, it's a little bit of a slow burn, but once it got to that that moment, 
we all know. Yeah. Um, I, I was on the edge of my seat, and I was yeah. like, I've never seen that before. Yeah, so no, I find that one much cool. scarier than the American yeah. one. Yeah, but that's personal taste. Two uh, thousands? We in the two thousands? No, I got aughts? I got one more. Oh, t- I'll well. give a deep cut because okay. that's what I do. <laughs> Go. Um, so from nineteen ninety nine, there is a um, a really peculiar slasher film called Dead of Night. It's also called Lighthouse yes. um, that I've talked about on the show uh, before. I think when we did kind of like our favorites of decades, um, and it is about a prison ship who is it's prisoners there's a prison nurse on board um some like prisoners who aren't that dangerous and then there is the worst serial killer in history called the headhunter and um they're transporting them to a new prison um, maximum security prison in the middle of the ocean and they um crash into rocks and they all wash up onto this island with two lighthouse keepers and so then it becomes the guards the prisoners the nurse the lighthouse keepers and the serial killer who begins pecking them all off um, and his, he's the headhunter, so his M.O. is collecting heads. And it's really tense, and uh, because the, the light, you're l- dealing with like a lighthouse and there's a storm going on, so it's, it's a really mm. tense movie, um, slasher serial killer, and it's really creative. I love that one. I remember seeing it on DVD or VHS. It was mm-hmm. like one of those direct-to-video. Yeah, it was like direct I, see that. I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, I always appreciate yeah. that one. All right, the aughts. The aughts. The aughts. The aughts. Uh, well, I know I saw I, I looked at your list and you have one that I was going to pick too. But um, should I start with? Well, I'll start with the one that I don't know if it's the same one because there's two movies I think of. But the one that I only saw again for the first time about four weeks ago is the only time I've been scared, like actually, like felt actually quite unnerved by a movie recently in the last couple of years. And when I first saw it, I thought it was creepy, but it didn't have the impact it had this viewing. And that is uh, Session Nine. It scared, yeah. like I was literally, j- I had forgotten all the twists. I'm just sitting at home watching it going, oh my God, the, it's saying maybe the Blu-ray yeah. just really made a huge improvement yeah. to this movie. And I, I find that, I think I would have just been so terrified to be in that environment, mm-hmm. in that kind of space. It's uh, so a bunch of people obviously have seen it, but they're, uh, it's about a bunch of guys who go in and they uh, take out the asbestos out of the walls and kind of uh, redo a space. And, and, and again, I think this is something about uh, when you cast tough people who are strong and don't look like anything could scare them type people to be your leads like uh, when you cast uh, George C. Scott the two mm-hmm. y- you don't feel like George C. Scott could be frightened by anything but then you have the changeling and Exorcist 3 and, and you I think you just believe it more so these guys take this job they undercut another another group who uh, were going to take longer and they're g- kind of like you're flipping a thing but it's the Danvers State Mental Hospital yes. mm-hmm. it's the real location yeah. one of the last things ever done there and this movie just has so much a creeping atmosphere and it has lots of misdirects in terms of the, what kind of film you think you're watching I definitely thought at one point oh I'm watching you know it's going to be a, a g- uh, you know kind of a Blumhouse-y paranormal activity movie or something at some point. And then it starts going to kind of the human psyche and the actors are brilliant. They're all like incredible casting. This movie, if, if you haven't seen it since it came out, I highly recommend that that Blu-ray and the extra features on there are great. Where they're actually talking about um, who's the uh, who's the uh, Josh Lucas yeah. talks mm-hmm. about how he thought it was a, an utterly terrifying experience. Like he, he talks about like really they f- all felt like this place was haunted while they're doing it. And he ta- recounted a couple stories and he just he just literally looked a little on edge even discussing it. Which is it's always kind of exciting when we have the mythos go from the Exorcist yeah. obviously had that because the set burned down and a lot of yeah. things around it. But man, that movie held up. Sound design, sound design, yeah, yeah. yeah. recording so good, so eerie. Yeah. yeah, so that's one of them. But I know you probably mentioned the other one too. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going back and forth between the two that I picked, but um, it, they, they both come from the same place, which is basically. Basically, in the 2000s is when, um, you know, things were coming out overseas first, Mm -hmm. you know, and we kept hearing about them. And so uh, my same cousin that I stayed up late with to watch uh, exorcism stuff, we had reconnected over the Saw series and Dexter in the 2000s. And so we were always trying to find the next (laughs) foreign film that was going to freak us out. And so there were things like um, uh, high tension and... Uh, and I remember we got an import of The Descent, which is yeah. one of the my picks, one. but I'll let you it talk about the other it. One, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, when you see The Descent without any context at all, uh, first of all, I think what, what Neil Marshall did so brilliantly is he made an extremely claustrophobic first act. Yeah. So I'm already kind of uncomfortable because of the situation. And then the second, I mean, it's almost ironically a found footage moment because you're seeing something kind of shaky through a camera lens and when you get the first glimpse of that there's more there mm. I, it's one of the scariest moments where you're like holy shit that's pretty fucking cool mm-hmm. but I'm going to left turn because it was actually um, getting a Spanish DVD import of Rec mm-hmm. yes. yeah. 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 Rec was on mine. my list yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again this is 
some of my least favorite things at that point in time. Uh, found footage, I'm over. Yep. Zombie movies, I was kind of over at that Wait point. Wait you were over? That was the Rec height was kind of, of the zombies. at the beginning. Well, not yeah. really. Oh, right. no, I'm talking about found I, footage. Rec was kind of like the... But I, I know, I don't... I guess it was like there two was years some, before Paranormal. I just remember it was things that I was not into at all. Like, found footage and zombies? Nah, I don't want to see that at all. Yeah. And and I got an import. I brought it over to my cousin's house. We watch it, and it's lean and mean. It's like 70-something minutes. It's really scary. It's mm-hmm. all in real time. It's from kind of the, the perspective of this news report and these cameras where they go into a um, kind of a, uh, an apartment complex to investigate. It's like the fire. Basically, this news crew is going with a fire crew, fire men's crew, into a building to investigate something, and all hell breaks loose there. Yeah. She's, a, she's a news reporter who's just like tagging along. Tagging yeah. along. She's yeah. like doing like a, a fun, lifestyle. frivolous it's lifestyle like piece. Lifestyle yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then cool. they, it's like the older woman that they're just responding uh, yeah. to, and yeah. they think it's just a heart attack yeah. or right. something like that. And so when yeah. the old when they go to the old woman, and <laughs> she turns around and races at them full speed <laughs> yeah. as a zombie, you're just like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah, and so then good. it doesn't let up yeah. from that moment, the whole movie. And so there's something scary about being along on that ride through what, you know, basically through people's cameras. Uh, and not only that, and, and it, you know, they remade it as Quarantine, which, you know, less said about that, the mm-hmm. better. Uh, <laughs> but what about that trailer? But, but, uh, they put the whole movie in the damn trailer. Well, yeah, the I ending mean, of the trailer. The yeah. ending in the poster. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the thing that they didn't do in Quarantine is, and again, theme, Exorcist, mm. Entity, Exorcist yeah. 3. Yeah. They drop a twist at the end of Wreck that's like, oh, now I'm scared. Yeah. yeah. That's where you're going? Fuck. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. showing you something that you couldn't imagine. Like that, you know, certain, you know, a physical, if you show a physical being that your brain couldn't, you haven't already seen before and your brain can't get, like, mm-hmm. imagine if that had just been what Mother Mama is and Mama, how scared, which it kind of was. And, in it, the and it's, um, uh, what's his name, Ryan? It, that was one of his uh, first things. Yeah, the. Yeah, the, the uh, uh, Javier. Rec, Javier. Oh, it's a, no, it's a, a, a Jama Balaguero in Paco Plaza. But, no, but the, but no, Javier, the, guy. the guy. Oh, 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 Javier Botet. Javier Botet. That Botet. was one yeah. of his first things was yeah. the wreck yes. mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. creature yeah. thing. Because you sit you sit there watching it, you can't imagine that it's a person. You can't imagine that. Yeah. You know it's not CGI, so your brain can't explain it. And <laughs> yeah. that, well, that's again, terrible. Yeah. So. And done in night vision. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. yeah. No, wreck is is an amazing film, and I even pair wreck 2 as yes. being yep. comparable to it. I would question which one's scarier. Yeah, I think I actually think wreck 2 is actually a scarier film, but it's much more of a roller coaster ride. Uh, whereas Wreck, it's like that sense of discovery. Wreck 2, you already know where you're getting into. Wreck 1, you're discovering as our news reporter is discovering. And mm-hmm. that sense of discovery always works so well when you're trying to establish some, some level of scares. And mm-hmm. yeah, I'm with you, man. That, that movie is terrifying. Yeah. And I like the Wreck series, but I feel about it the way you, Elric feels about Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Which is, I think, the first movie on its own, if there's never another one, would still be considered <laughs> one of the scariest of all time. But yeah. then the fact that they kept going. And I like the, the, like the third one. The third one's fun. I like yeah. the third mm-hmm. one, which is like a wedding, and they just drop the found footage thing right yeah. away. Like It's a fun franchise, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that experience of seeing the first one for the first time yeah. with no context is amazing. Yeah. So I'll take off of that with no contact zombies and say 28 days later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which I saw in the theater just expecting a zombie movie. And when you have the very first scene and he wakes up in the hospital and the zombie starts running at him. That was like a game changer to me. I remember thinking, like, wait, he can't do that. He's a zombie. They don't do that. Uh, it's wrong. And then you, just to see the whole rage zombie at that point, my brain could not comprehend that zombies, because it had built in for decades, you know, with just the Romero zombies that kind of move along and tend to hunt more in hordes than just solo chase scenes. But yeah, yeah it and the movie, just how it, it shifts and it goes through all of these different environments, like it just, it worked for me. That was the first one I remember was seeing for the first time that really captured George Romero's Night of the Living Dead mm-hmm. for me. Like yeah. the, the idea of these characters stuck together, they yeah. don't all agree. I don't know. That was the first one that reminded me of, of like actually capturing that voice and spirit of, and of Romero. And uh, because zombie, uh, zombie films are always best when they are political, like Romero was, and that one does. It shows like which groups would take over, yeah. who's going to yeah, take yeah. advantage of this like situation you're mm-hmm. in, yeah. which I always think, and because they're never about the zombies being the scariest part. Usually, it's the people, people. you know. Yeah, and you're right. Assault on Precinct 13 feels more like um, Romero's Night of the Living Dead mm-hmm. than a lot of zombie films of that time period did. So yeah, 28 days later when it came back, it, it just felt true, but even more. More scarier than anything. I, I think seen. the first few minutes of Twenty Eight Weeks Later yeah, is just even like, scarier. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, that, I think yeah. the opening just the way of the that opens, one. it's like yeah. Yeah. terrific. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, unrelenting. I mean, Twenty Eight Days Later is one of my backups, but I think another backup of mine, Rec, was num- my number one. Yeah, but my uh, number one, was one of my backups is Michael Haneke's Funny Games remake. Oh, oh my uh, god, remake. 
the yes, remake. Yes, the oh, remake. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, listen. I mean, I think there's a there's just some sort of emotional disconnect I have with the the foreign film, the foreign version. Um, whereas I went into the remake, and uh, I I I don't know. I was just like captivated by the rhythm of the dialogue and these characters. But once it started to once these kids started to manipulate and play with Naomi, uh, Naomi Watts, Watts, Watts yeah. uh, and her family, Tim I Roth, just yeah, yeah it was Tim Roth. It's an interesting cast. Once they started playing with that, I was just invested all the way. Like every time, and I and I and I, and I think it's not because I'm watching two stars. I uh, get tortured by these two kids. It's because I don't know who these two kids are. I didn't recognize their faces. I had mm-hmm. no idea who they were before I saw the movie. Mm-hmm. And just the the stuff that they were doing. I, I mean, like it's 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 a very close remake of the first film. But I think that they, I don't know. There was just like a weird disconnect I had with the first one. But this one, I just thought he did such a, a great job, just in design and tension. And I just remember like just holding my hands like this the mm-hmm. entire time because every time. Uh, you know, Naomi Watts was like trying to uh, uh, dry her phone, and then one of the kids just came in and was put, adjusting his glove. I was like, "Oh fuck! Don't do anything! Mm-hmm. Please don't do anything!" And it's then a lot that, like um, the strangers, but without masks. If, if the strangers' characters took off their mask and just the smarter, yeah, did it a, like yeah. it's like it's it's the more like real time version. Yeah, they're of having the a conversation. Yeah. They're becoming it's a part of the conversation, yeah. and then the 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 film manipulation yeah. is a very frustrating one. But uh, the I just self-reflexive side to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just I, I I was taken by it. I loved it. I loved that little added bit to when, it. When uh, you talked about um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre earlier and how Grandpa keeps dropping the hammer when he's trying to <laughs> hit her in the head, oh. that reminds me of the egg scene, mm-hmm. um, oh. where it's it's like splinter. Like when you're standing there and you're trying to get a splinter out of your yeah. hand, it's what it like the churning in your stomach and there's like anxiety and oh. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to see. Yeah, it's, uh, going back to that rhythm of dialogue mm-hmm. that I'm talking talking about between the two actors and he's like I don't understand why you just don't give me another egg and she's like fine I'll give you another egg and then he drops it and he comes back and he's like <laughs> I'm sorry I uh, I dropped the egg and she's just like and you're like oh what it, it, it's oh. It, there's so much tension in those moments it's um, so simple but it's all about it does manners so much, too it's yeah. like your manners How yeah act, oh I'm sorry oh I'm yeah. sorry and the, yeah it's, it's kind of frightening and I, Tim Roth yeah. being being the audience going fuck is going on here <laughs> yeah. like i think he actually comes yeah. in he's like what's going on here yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why is this happening right now and then you know just the the child uh the child harm that mm-hmm. comes with that movie too is just gut-wrenching totally. yeah all right. Any, I got a deep cut. Oh, yeah, go slightly. for it. Okay, deep Almost cut for there. the end of the aughts. Um, Alex D. Iglesias. I'm going to say his mm-hmm. name so wrong. I'm sorry about that. Um, the Baby's Room from 2006. It was on six films to scare you. Keep you, you awake. Keep you awake. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Great collection. Um, so, yeah, it's a really good collection. But that particular film, um, it's about a husband and wife who have just given birth. And he starts, he gets like one of these high-tech baby monitors with the video. And he starts seeing shit on it. And um, it's just really effective. It's small. It's basically just takes place inside the house. But yeah, it's just really effective. And it's one that I was burning my way through that entire series when it came out. And there's some really good movies in there in general. I highly recommend the Christmas one's really good. Um, yeah, there's some great ones in there. But that was one that kind of took me by surprise. And it's got some really scary scenes in it. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. 2010s to now, right? 2010s. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. still Here scary? Does anything scare you guys still? Do you still get scared by new movies? Oh, yeah. Sinister. Sinister. Yeah. 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 That is a scary one. I haven't thought about that what one. What else? That was, my, that was my number one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let's start with you. Yeah. Well, I, Sinister <laughs> came in before I was Mr. Blumhouse. Blumhouse rep. Yeah. Um, but I was I saw it at a, at a really early screening. It was actually, now that I am behind the scenes, I know what the screening was. Um you know, it was basically a classic. Hey, let's get some early, you know, some critics to get an early, uh, some early tastemaker opinions. And Derrickson was there. Um, but I just remember watching Sinister and getting the same feeling I got from watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. at the same time. You know, the film opens with a snuff film on eight millimeter, yeah. and it's done silently. There's maybe like a little bit of a droning happening, and you're watching a family get hung from a tree. And then when it stopped. And Sinister came, like the title card came scrawled up on the bottom corner. I went, it's like, oh, what are we watching? Yeah. Like, I just watched a snuff movie. And then we, and then it just further helped that um, I quickly identified with Ethan Hawke and his family. And I understood exactly where we were going. And I was emotionally invested in him. And then Derrickson was just doing, he was just ratcheting up the tension, you know, with his kid having night terrors. And the kid comes pouring out of the box in that one moment. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, okay, where are you going with this? The Bagul element 
it, you know, it's a little bit of a stretch. I mean, like, where are you going to go with all of this? But, you know, what a brilliant device of discovering these eight millimeter uh, mo- little mo- home movies uh, throughout the course of the film mm-hmm. and watching how Ethan Hawke kind of worms his way out of scenarios and is and engaging with his wife about, you know, the fact that he moved his family into a murder house so he can become famous again and and find inspiration for his new book. There's a great moment. I think it's just a really well-written scene where he's just up late one night with a glass of whiskey watching an old um, a talk show appearance. You knew exactly what his motivation was watching that moment. Mm-hmm. Like watching... Getting back to that moment. Getting yeah. back yeah. to that, like, that's what I'm striving for again. And I'm going to do whatever I can to get to that and even put my family in harm's way, even though, you know, there's not ill intent. It's just really wrong. Um, but each of those home movies is really well done. Mm-hmm. The music that's accompanied by them, um, and it's just something yeah, Christopher really Young wrong. And a very, a very odd score for him. Well, it's not a lot of Christopher Young. Oh, really? It's a, yeah, no. A lot of that stuff is pieces of oh. Christopher Young, but there's a lot of Boards of Canada. There's a lot okay. of all these other bands that they pulled from. Okay. Um, but they didn't, I don't, Christopher Young didn't do too many of the home movies. Those were all pieces of other artists' work. Oh, wow. Um, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. yeah. I feel like it feels like a modern Stephen King thing that Very much. King would yeah, have done. Well, the King. device the writer, of a writer, yeah. 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 Like the the Shining, the it's well, even the trailer, I remember being really kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But the, it's the, like, there's the lawnmower scene, is like the one. <laughs> oh my God, the lawnmower yeah, scene. I, that's, yeah. Yeah. I jumped so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That's the one that gets you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's, it's The Conjuring, uh, mm-hmm. which I know is kind of an obvious answer, but here's why. So, um, obviously, James Wan, very talented guy, uh, but our, our friend Joe Bashara uh, not only composes music for James's films, but he's also the demon in all of them. So, he's the demon in Insidious, and he did the music. He's the demon in The Conjuring. And so, my experience of seeing these movies in the movie theaters was different. While everyone else was screaming, I'm watching like, oh, it's just Joe. It doesn't <laughs> – it really – because he's he, – if you ever meet him, he's, he's this, the sweetest, the sweetest most soft-spoken guy <laughs> And so to me, it's just goofy seeing him dressed in all black uh, or as an old lady. It's just like, oh, it's just Joe. <laughs> However, so I saw The Conjuring, and I love it. I just think the craft of it is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then I bought the Blu-ray when it came out, and I'm home alone. Uh, I think my roommate was out house-sitting something, so it's just me by myself late at night. I put all the lights out. I crank the sound. I'm like, I'm going to watch Conjuring again. And I think it got to the moment where – where. Um, uh, where the, is, there, is there one moment where they're staring into a dark, but they don't show anything, like behind a door? Is they're the staring into a closet, and then it goes up to the top. No, no, no. And oh, no. So it's, it's, the girls, it's the girls, two girls in a bedroom, and one of them is looking off into a dark corner. And she's right. like, what are you staring at? That's in the first Conjuring, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Why am I remembering a wardrobe? Well, there's, so a, war- there's, that, there's a wardrobe. There's, there's that, and there's yeah. one where on top of the... Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. yeah. But I'm watching it late at night in my place alone, and that moment creeped me the fuck out. Like, mm-hmm. I actually started to get scared, and it made me forget that yeah. it was Joe <laughs> when he pops yeah. up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was like, you know what? This is genuinely a pretty scary, solid movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Wan, he knows what he's doing. He yeah. does know what he's doing. Yeah. So. Oh, and add to that, the I think I still think the the nun scene in Conjuring 2 with the painting oh God, is yeah. the scariest scene Such in the last few years. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just, and that's a reshoot, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it yeah. just shows yeah. you great things can come from that. Like, it's it's a, yeah. it's amazingly uh, the way it's just put together as yeah. a constructed scene. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Uh, what's your one, babe? So I will say um, the one that I was alluding to before, which was the screening that I was oh, at yeah. with you, right. um, Kane, where we saw Autopsy of Jane Doe, yeah. which yeah, it's... Yeah, if you have not seen that, you like the yeah. best spook show of the last few years yeah sure. it's it's not a film like you're not going to be thinking about it three days later in comparison to your own mortality yeah. or anything like that but it is a tight like hour and a half ride of mm-hmm. just kind of being on the edge of your seat and we saw it at beyond fest and i remember just both of us kind of there was this moment where midway through i was like holy shit this yeah. is good and i was just so excited um again you had no idea where it was going yeah like none. at all you're just it's these guys doing an autopsy on this woman's body that was found under underneath the house underneath the house in an impossible in circumstance yeah. yeah where there's no way no the, all the doors are locked but everyone's dead inside and so no one like the cops are like it makes no sense like no one could have left and left the place locked like this and yet her body was there so they then do this autopsy and as they peel back the layers on the autopsy other things start to happen, and it becomes a very different movie. Yeah. And then it becomes re- it becomes really scary because yeah. the the filmmakers are ahead of us. You yeah, know? and that was just one that I loved that screening so much. It was 
a reminder of what I love in horror yeah. movies, which is that rush, that sitting there and going, I don't know what the fuck's happening, but I love every minute of this. And it's just amazing. So that yeah. was a good one. And that director's doing something with Del Toro now, right? The um, stories to tell in the dark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But so, yeah, some more spooky stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the writers behind Autopsy are doing a lot of exciting stuff as well. Nice. Uh, my one is, is definitely in the vein of uh, you do not know where this is going. I saw a, a midnight screening. The premiere is called uh, at AFI Fest in uh, L.A. And no, so no one really knew what this movie was. And I, I'm watching a film with a British hitman just killing people. And I'm going, oh, cool, this is like a hitman yeah. thriller. And then it goes complete horror, mm-hmm. nosedive, wicker man. And that's Kill List by Ben Wheatley. Yeah. Oh, my God. That that was one of my favorite screenings in my life because I had no idea what I was watching. And when it went horror with the tunnel stuff and the soundtrack, I was just left like in the dark at the end of that movie going, what did I just see? You didn't, you didn't like that one? Oh, I my f- God. Oh, man, I find yeah. that I find That, that I was thinking about days later. Yeah. Like the ending scene still disturbed the shit out oh, of me yeah, days I l- later. Oh, yeah, I love where still it goes. Still now. And yeah. it's not even the big stuff. It, there's a, there, it's kind of hard to tell without spoilers, but there's a dinner scene where you know you just think you're this hitman and you're hanging out with his buddies and like the, the, one of the guests of dinner does something in a bathroom and puts like a weird symbol on the back thing and suddenly you're like what kind of movie am I watching and you realize it's more, more like a cult movie mm-hmm. about a chosen person kind of thing and if you're a fan of the Wicker Man which I love the ending of the Wicker Man obviously mm-hmm. um, it, this movie uh, obviously Turk disagrees and no I mean, here's the thing uh, you don't I, when hate I saw Wicker I, Man do you what are you out of okay. your mind? No, no. sure. You're talking, sure. talking about Kill List. Okay. No, well, I, I, I need to I need to rewatch okay. Kill List because I saw it. I've only seen it once. I had a, a similar opinion when I saw Session Nine. The first time I saw Session yeah. Nine, I literally flipped off the screen because I was so mad at it. And then I came out on DVD and I rewatched it. and I was like, "This is a brilliant piece of cin- uh, cinema." Yeah. So I need to do a okay. reach out Kill List okay. right now. I'm just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, me no, too. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I love no, that. No, that totally affected Any me. Any Kill List fans? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Ben Wheatley's an acquired taste. Yeah, but that one I, I think is still his most accessible. You know, I think it's really. Like, yeah, yeah, because most of his films take I... too big a tonal kind of cartoon tonal shift. Free Fire? Huh? Which one? Which is it? Free? Oh, yeah. is it free, free Fire. Free, free Fire. fire. Yeah. That's fun. Ooh, might be it's his. Fun. Yeah. Sightseers. Sightseers is fun. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, I'd say that. But this is the only I'd one that's like acquired hard. Taste as well. yeah. Yeah. I know, to me, it's mainstream. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, deep cuts over here. <laughs> what? All right, Rob. And no one, no one said it follows. Oh, I, I did. Uh, no, country. it follows? No one? It it's follows. my backup. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, one of my, that's one of my backup I watched ones. that one with you, too, and yeah. you loved it. I, I, I lo- well, look, the you thing that... You loved it, but you didn't. I was okay with it. it yeah. What? I, it, look, if you get when to it see it before out, the yeah. hype, though, like, again, it felt like, that felt like discovering one of these movies before that yeah. came out that no one had talked about. But what I loved about it, it was the first movie in my like kind of adult lifetime where I didn't know what was going to happen in the frame. So I'm just watching it on a big screen and your eyes are like a carpenter frame constantly going, Mm -hmm. where is it going to come? What is it going to be? And there was a moment where a giant walks under. You see a girl walking in one direction and when they cut to the other side, a giant walks through the door. That is shit you cannot prepare for. And the music does a very distinct sting that gets you on Uh, edge. uh, That was kind of ruined for me because afterwards the director was there and he he was telling stories about the movie. He goes, yeah, you would be surprised how hard it was to find a giant in Detroit. (laughs) We're we're just like, (laughs) you know, the practicalities of making a movie. We need a giant. We need a giant Uh, in Detroit. But I think that movie did such a great job of like being about something that you can't put its finger on. And everyone, a lot of our friends who would complain to me about the movie, like it doesn't follow its own rules. The the idea that like we need rules to be scary is insane to me. Like sometimes you need something that you can't pin down, you know? But I think it's a great film. And that was one that got... for me, got better on repeat viewings. Mine like, too. I, I enjoyed it in the first one, but I watched it uh, again when it came out on Blu-ray. And the second time, I knowing where it goes, I was just so impressed with how the camera is constantly moving. Much like yeah. you, ha- you have to be constantly moving. Yeah. Just the entire time, if you pay attention, it's like there's always movement or something happening. And it kind of just adds to the eerie feeling of what's actually happened within the movie. Yeah, the and, f- and I believe John Carpenter is a fan of this movie. Mm-hmm. I, I think uh, him and Sandy had said yeah. it was one that they liked a lot. So yeah. if he likes it, come on. The yeah. first time I saw it, um, I was not annoyed, but just kind of rubbed the wrong way about um, the repetitiveness of it, where it was like, something's chasing us. Let's run here something's chasing us here too let's go here and literally the film is built out of five or six of those let's run oh it's here let's run oh it's here sequences and so that really graded me the first time I saw it and it wasn't until the second time that I was able to really appreciate that the even though it is built out of those five sequences that feel very repetitive the way that they build the scares in each one is really well crafted and it's, it's definitely like, got good jump scares and it's like that great Twilight Zone I think we've talked about a number of times with the box where mm-hmm. you get a box and you could push a button and it's going to kill someone and right. you know 
what it's going to happen once you pass it on. It's the same thing. Like this has actually got a moral dilemma, which is to not get killed by this mm-hmm. thing, you have to pass it on to yeah. someone. Yeah. And and it's all about like modern yeah. sexuality and, and yeah. dating and how sex has kind of become this kind of a thing, a transaction of a type. Oh yeah, know. when Michael Monroe go, meets those guys in the boat, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, it's, my heart it's sunk. Bleak, yeah. Like I was just like. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. It's, oh. it's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so, and and kind of it could be one of those cases where we always talk about Nightmare on Elm Street and Wreck, like what we were just saying about man, don't make a sequel, and this will always stay scary. There's a part of me that straight away wants a sequel, and then realizing that will ruin. You don't it. want a sequel. But I, it's like you I don't. want a sequel, but I also know that yeah. will be the end yeah. of it. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will add the last shift just because oh. I saw that one. That was like a Netflix find one night where I'm just going through Netflix and um, we were friends with the director, Anthony de, yeah, Blasi. Anthony de Blasi, and I knew he was working and I was like, oh, Anthony's new film's on here and I knew nothing about it and that one kind of fucked me up for the night just because it's so intense, um, it comes at you kind of slowly and then once it hits, it's just throwing scares at you back to back, it's very psychological. Um, yeah, that one. And it's got some really great gore sequences in it, too. So that one came completely unprepared and had no idea what to expect. But it just it was a really good, scary ride. And the listeners pick uh, we have to mention, because it reminds me of that and the ending of Wreck, which came to us from listeners of the old show, which is Taking of Deborah Logan. Oh, yeah. Which none of us was on none of our radar. And listeners kept saying, Taking of Deborah, this new movie on Netflix. And then we all watch and we all equally were like, yeah, that, those last moments are, again, something yeah. you can't expect. It's what you're it. seeing. Yeah. And it's found footage. You wouldn't mm-hmm. think you would you know, be mm. as excited, but yeah. um, so, so there's still spooky shit. We could still yeah. kind of be. What we miss, there. guys? What we anything, miss? Anything? You're just the witch. witch. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The witch is. Yeah. Which is I it think is. it's more dread. Yeah. You know? I think it's. Yeah. Was this scary? Yeah. 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 The opening scene. Yeah. 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 I think Actually, I was just totally forgot about The Witch, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's a great <laughs> movie. I've only seen it once. And again, I love these movies where you just can't wait to see what the person right. does next. Mm-hmm. Now, right. That and It Follows, they're like, I want to see whatever they make next. Yeah. Right. Right. Totally. So anything else we, we totally dropped the ball on? Which one? Gerald's Game. Oh, Gerald's, Gerald's, Gerald's Game did have a pretty... Super tense. Gerald's yeah, Game. Yeah, Gerald's Game. There was a moment. There's I don't a know if it scared me. It just made yeah. me wince. Yeah. And there's an incredible Netflix video where they show it to next, net, that scene to Netflix employees. Uh, oh, interesting. And seeing their reaction, it's it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, they, where yeah. they just like literally sit them down, and their reaction is priceless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Raw. 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 Yeah, invitation. the invitation. A lot of invitation. those are like about um, it's the idea that's scary. Raw and invitation. Yeah. It's like the the concept, the last image is what scares you. It's it, it's the, there's dread built, kind of like Don't Look Now, I guess, yeah. in the same yeah. way. I think what we're getting is a lot of dread filled movies, mm-hmm. you know, where you're just kind of unsettled by an idea totally. or a scenario. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Raw definitely has the repulsion element as well. well that's, like that's I was in a screening too. where like uh, people walked out of it yeah. like shock had to leave, is, shock so, is not yeah, the shock value scares. and repulsion. Yeah. Uh, so that is our uh, by decade. Why don't we just like open for a few questions because we'll never be in the room, you know, very likely until next year. So if we'll we'll repeat the questions so listeners yeah. can hear it at right. home. Yes, at home. So yeah, just let's fire away. <laughs> yes. Most oh. funny movie? Scariest, scariest in the same movie. Funny. Oh, in the scariest same movie. Uh, for me, Evil Dead 2, because it has oh, both yeah, yeah. for oh, me. Yeah. You get, especially at, a, at the right age, you get both. You get a beat of scary, and then it's hilarious. Shaun of the Dead, the Don't Stop Me Now scene. It's good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really good scare, and then it got hilarious, but yet terrifying. It's a hard thing yeah. to do, yeah. keeping those two things next to each other, I yeah. think. Yeah. Turk. American Werewolf. Yeah, oh, American yeah. Werewolf. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. best balance of it. Uh-huh. But Evil Dead 2 is pretty darn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of the idea. Any others? Yes. Do we have a movie that we're angry that somebody made us watch it? <laughs> that's a good, uh, that's let's a good talk, question. Let's talk to everybody Turk has dated before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not <laughs> – what is it? Um, Martyrs. Martyrs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The remake? Yeah. Martyrs, the remake or the original? No, the, the other one. <laughs> the, ori- the, the remake. Yeah, I won't say who. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, God. Okay. I will say um, I dated a guy who knew I was really into horror, and so um, he really wanted me to see Captivity and uh, the Courtney Solomon film. Not my cup of tea. And that was one that I was just like, this is like just mean. But there, I know people who love that movie. But yeah. yeah, that was one that I was kind of like, dude, I wish I hadn't watched this. I didn't go back out with him. I mean, Brian yeah. Collins and I went and saw that awful Hellraiser movie. Um, oh. The one before the one Fat that just came out. Fat Pinhead? Not, oh. not Gary Tunicliffe's, the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that was, a, that was a bad choice. Yeah. I was pretty angry about that. Yeah. 
I bet we made some of you angry at watching like Kathy's Curse or something, right? Like, yeah, we probably <laughs> made you guys watch some movies. I feel that like you're this like, be some Devil's Honey anger. At, at oh us my gosh, Devil's Honey! I, I Everyone, stand by it. I do too. <laughs> I stand by it as well. Go to, go to the Severn booth, watch yeah, Devil's yeah. Honey. You will see some stuff you've never seen yeah. before. I don't know if it's good or bad, uh, but you've it's never not good. seen it before. It's not good, yeah, but it's something. Yeah, but it's special. It's uh, special. Who else? <laughs> Yeah, you. Yeah. Um, do you think the 80s was better because of the flashbacks to like things like yeah. Exorcist or whatever? Or I actually thought Texas Chainsaw Massacre was real for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think that we will never get back to a period where we, everything is, well, let me fact check everything first before everything? I don't think. So we're, 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 the, the, yeah, uh, we're, we're, con- the, we're the 80s better because we couldn't fact check everything. I don't everything. think it's about that. Or were the, the 80s about, better just because we were kids then? No, I don't think it's, no. about, no. About, it's, about, no. It's, about, it's about that. I think it's about the, 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 the there was a, it was a freer time for filmmaking. You know, 70s was, 70s was about class and 80s was about the studios coming around and understanding that you can make money and mm-hmm. you have blockbusters. But it was also a freer time where... Toby Hooper can sneak through an Invaders from Mars remake, you know? There yeah. was a lot of, yeah, but it's also like a lot opinion. Of, well, no, we also yeah. get drowned by no. other people's opinions know, before we even see something. Well, what I'm just saying is that it's just like there was a lot I'm more, sure the there was a larger movie. tapestry of shit getting made that will never, ever get made right. today, ever. Like, you'll never get a Return of Living Dead on the level of Return of Living Dead. You're right. never going to yeah. get a reanimator again. You know, I, you're not going to get that stuff. <laughs> we say as if one is yeah. uploaded to one Netflix is, one on is Friday. Done. Well, right I don't, Sorry, I don't count. Somebody just shot one on his cell I don't phone count right that. now. I don't know yeah. if you yeah. even realize there's a new reanimator movie from Italy on Netflix as of Friday, and none of us even had a clue. I, it doesn't yeah. look good, but it's there. Yeah, yeah. I also think that the actual business side of the 1980s movies um, really played into kind of what made it so desirable because you had the boom of the VHS market. And as soon as that happened, um, people literally just started throwing money at horror films because they could see how well they were doing. I mean, that's how Frank Hennenlotter got right. money. Um, yeah. These are not films that's that studios would it's have like made, but they were just case. throwing money. Yeah, but and, I, mean, um, I think it's more to his point. It's like when I saw Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer and it said based on a true story, I thought, holy shit, that really happened. <laughs> and that's as close as it to it happened. Oh, Whereas yeah, yeah, yeah. When Platinum <coughs> Dunes kept putting Base Entry Story in front of every one of their movies, I was like, that's a horse, that's a horse <laughs> shit. And I remember walking out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 2003 one, which I do like, but people in my audience were like, oh my God, he's still out there. Yeah, but mm-hmm. we're like, but you, but you, you, Elric, yeah. Becca, and I are a microcosm on a larger scale. So right. when someone goes to see The Strangers, they believe that because it's yeah, they based believe on, that that happened. Yeah, events, I did know? the I, I Q and A'd Katie Featherston, and she was talking about how people actually send her letters about their own paranormal experiences and possessions because yeah. they actually think she's been through it and they want to commiserate with her. Yeah. Um, so I think that yeah, to but many I, people, it's still there's a reality to it. I don't know. I, I also don't discount like the, to me things like Rotten Tomatoes, all this stuff. It's it's problematic because you can't not get some sort of opinion before you see it. And the way we used to watch movies, we got this golden period where I knew all I knew is what was on the back of the VHS cover right. and I had no one to ask maybe I could crack open Leonard Malton or something <laughs> but the going from picture to picture and deciding what to watch with no influence was a golden period so I the movies films, had to be good but that was a magical I period. watch stuff like that on Netflix all the time oh, I, all I don't the time I just, it's not the same you like it's just pictures I don't know it's I don't know it's it, it's lost something now that's also cuz we're cuz we had that experience so if you never had that experience I don't know what it would be like now maybe Netflix does provide that there's I, I mean like of course being part of this I hear about the bulk of films that are coming out but then there are always ones like last shift where i'm literally like i don't know what this is taking of deborah logan i don't know what occasionally this you is. can get those yeah, and pop up, I, yeah. you know it's a complete virgin yeah. viewing i have no idea what's going on i mean does anyone do what i do trying to avoid a trailer now yeah it's no. like yeah. i mean has anyone not seen the hereditary trailer yeah <laughs> okay. like I haven't, i'm only hearing it and i can't stop that but it, yeah, like, i was sitting I'm with him and he literally it. went like this ah while he was playing <laughs> but like the i'm not kidding and now i have anticipation something i had as a kid if i had seen the trailer i would just be going oh, that'll be good but now i have like genuine anticipation i might be disappointed but who cares but i'm excited about it. you i think to stay in love with movies you've got to keep finding ways for you to do it as the viewer and if that exactly, means blocking yeah. certain things block it yeah you know? it's like take rotten tomatoes out of your favorites yeah, you know? don't exactly. listen don't go on twitter don't yeah. you know, you like that's the thing or or unfollow the people that are that are constantly the tastemakers that are talking about these movies really early on. It pisses me off to no end. When an, uh, bef- right before the Avengers, it was all these think pieces about, oh, what about this thing that happened in Avengers Infinity Four? I'm like, dude, it's like, it's Thursday at three o'clock. Yeah, Can you yeah, just yeah. give me a few more hours <laughs> yeah. before you start pushing your think pieces on me? About but it, it used to be your job to do those, and mine yeah, too. Yeah, no, and I, so but I never did we that. We had shit to do though. them, but it's gotten know. worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, gotten worse. <laughs> it's gotten much worse. Yeah, that's yeah, a good question. I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, how, how did, does this guy not have Scream? I did yeah, any of us that's have... That's like your jam, That movie's right? fun. So did any of us have Scream? Uh, yeah. The that opening scene a, That movie's a scary. Little, huh? The opening scene, I think, when we first saw it was Yeah, scary. but as a body of work, yeah. as a whole, I mean, it was more mm-hmm. of a fun... It was a fun roller coaster ride to me with a lot of scary bits yeah. in between. Yeah. I mean, that movie, you know me. Yeah, 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 yeah you know, yeah. you made all documentary. It yeah. didn't scare me, but I was so excited when that movie yeah. came out. Mm-hmm. It's The opening scene is still one of the greatest openings to a horror movie ever. What it does... What it does is... letter to horror films. Yeah, what it does is it does exactly what American Werewolf in London does, which is it tells a scary story first and then it throws in the laughs in between and mm-hmm. it does a really good job of that yeah. I think it was the last good movie that did that you know Shaun yeah. of the Dead isn't a horror isn't a horror it's comedy, a comedy first. it's a comedy yeah. I would even venture comedy. to say Happy Death Day delves into yeah Happy Death Day bit. gets close so to that it tone. gets close cool yeah. That's a, yeah, it's yeah. fun cool <laughs> we were all surprised we liked it so much so. <laughs> yes in the blue shirt Yeah. Oh God, yeah. It's so bleak where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Movies that are not traditionally. That's normal. definitely a nightmare movie. That's there for is sure. a French filmmaker. Don't forget to repeat the question for yes, the. Yes. Sorry. Yes. What What are non-traditional horror films that stuck with us like horror films? Yeah. Um, there is a French female filmmaker whose last name I'm going to slaughter. Catherine Brunet. Brulee. Yeah, Brulee. 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 Fat Girl. Her film <laughs> Fat Girl. Yeah, Fat Girl's a great one. Do you, like weeks afterwards, I was still like having shudders from that. Dog Tooth was another one where like days later I was still like I don't know what I watched, but it destroyed me for a couple of days. Yeah. Splatoon. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, like, I, that wasn't yeah. my era. That was not my thing, you know, but my dad kept Platoon away from me for a really mm-hmm. long time for a good reason. And then I watched it by myself and I was completely destroyed because, I mean, like, I think it was the first war movie I had ever seen, too. And to have such a, it just has a visceral quality to it mm-hmm. and just such heartbreaking moments that I, you know, I mean, it stuck with me for sure. I mean, that's like the horrors of war, and Oliver Stone did a great job with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. The first few Darren Aronofsky movies. Like, I, I've only seen Pie once. I never want to see it again. Requiem for a Dream, I went to go see in Manhattan with a full theater, and it, nobody moved. When, when it was over, nobody said a word, and we all sat there until the end credits. <laughs> And I never want to sit through it again. Oh, and you it's know a what? great movie. Going, mean, back, to, going great. back to your question about movies that somebody pushed on me and I got angry about it, Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> Fuck that person. <laughs> <laughs> I, was re- I was really angry after I, because he was like, come see it. And you know what? And he's listening and he knows. I'm sorry, Jared. Um, <laughs> oh, it's Jared? Yeah. I, I remember seeing that. I was so mad. I was like, I wasted my time. I was so. But why not? You didn't think it was a good movie? I hated oh, it. Are you wow. serious? I, no, I've never seen it again. I've I never think they seen should it show it to high school students. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, show that to show that to high school students. <laughs> no, but no, I, 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 I totally agree, and that would be my pick too. As a movie, I always think if you showed it to all high school uh, senior boys, the, uh, you know, rape would not r- decline rapidly, and that's irreversible. Oh my god! You yeah. couldn't, as a human being on this earth, watch that movie and then want to emulate the things you see in that. It's, it's so painful and grotesque, and it shows what's being lost. What what you strip away from humans' dreams and hopes, yeah. and it shows it in reverse order in a way that's utterly painful. And it's not a pleasant movie, and you, no. you know, no one wants to rush out and see it. But seeing it one time, it's it's an experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I actually, that's probably my favorite. One of my favorite subgenres are movies that are. You know, they're like Deliverance. It's yeah. a drama, maybe a thriller, but it has this horror. Uh, I could even cite a comedy that I felt that way about, which is easily my worst day of my life, was um, Happiness by Todd Solondz. <laughs> Man, we had this hot thing going, and we're wow. excited to meet, and we finally met, and we went to Happiness, and oh, man. I was <laughs> laughing the whole way. She wasn't. Uh, <laughs> we, weird, weird, like, parental sodomy thing with tuna fish. Did uh, not go down well. Uh, uh, and it, But it's a, such a bleak, like, it's like a director going, oh, here's my portrait of something funny but you're like it's also hell you've also shown like yeah. this dark layer yeah. I picture so many dates going wrong that way from killing of a sacred deer oh, yeah. where yeah, it's like totally. one person's cracking yeah, up yeah. and the other person's just horrified yeah, yeah. No, but that would be parents oh, going cool. out on a date yeah. like yeah. we've got babysitters we're gonna go to a movie about killing our kids it's got Nicole yeah. Kidman in it yeah, 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 it's gonna yeah. be great it's yeah. one of my favorites that's a great yeah, it was like one of the best films of last <laughs> year if you haven't seen uh, it I think we have time for one more was that way as well one more one more question way in the back way in the back way in the back Oh shit! What's our that favorite VHS okay. cover? Separating ever. the movie from it, oh, yeah. I loved the cover to Body Shop when I was a kid. Like the movie, it's not good, but That's the cover, that, big, oh, like yeah, yeah. puffy yeah. '80s, like hair and just this hand laying next to and it, and of a woman's head, and a head, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I will also say the dead pit because the eyes lit up. It's pretty bad. It's bleeders. That was not. I think Bleeders was more '90s, but it had the squishy cover. Yeah, the squishy cover. So. Um, I'm gonna say the Mutilator. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a great that's a great VHS mm-hmm. cover. That's pretty good. What about you? Yeah. So um, I you know what I actually went on this little tangent a few days ago of 
videotapes that used to use Freddie and Jason as the selling point. And one I have is a movie called, uh, what's it called now? Oh, Junior, which is literally, it's the greatest <laughs> cover of this dude with a chainsaw going through the, the cover. And he's like, I, you, you've met Freddie, you've met Jason, now meet Junior, or something along those lines. <laughs> And that dude is nowhere in the movie. It's like it, it's a terrible, terrible movie, and it's mm-hmm. nothing like that cover. But then I went down that rabbit hole where then you know Sleepaway Camp Two uses yeah. that iconography, and uh, it, what it, Night of the Demons, you know, Angela's having a party, Freddy and uh-huh. Jason are too scared yeah. to come, yeah. and so I was like, how many Freddy Jason covers are there out there? Yeah. There's probably a lot. Yeah, Which Mikey. One? Mikey, Mikey, Mikey yeah, did the it. kid one, yeah. So that's oh, a, the other one was uh, the other one too is Deadly Spawn. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That yeah, a good but cover. not the painted one. It's just a uh, it's just a photograph of, of the, the, the of the creature in a black room, yeah. and then there's just like a body part, and it's like oh, that works. I'll also say elves. The cover oh, yeah, was the, the box present. cover was great. The movie's like a lesson in why Grizzly Adams shouldn't smoke, but um, literally he like it does not stop. Like it's, it's crazy through the movie, but um, yeah, the cover was really good. Blood Beach, I'll throw in that same category. Yeah, good Brilliant good cover. The movie was mm. kind of a cop drama with maybe something under the sand. You disappoint but, um, me. Yeah, uh, it's not my jam. Get that uh, vinegar syndrome for that demon wind cover because that demon wind <laughs> cover it w- is enough to make you watch that movie and then you'll be like, eh. But yeah. still, you know, go yeah. buy it. Go spend your money on it. Yeah, there were so many like that. Like <laughs> Microwave yeah. Massacre is incredibly deceptive. Elric's favorite. Elric's uh, yeah. favorite. I yeah. don't yeah. like that movie. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Is that yeah. it? I think, I think we, we got to wrap up, guys. Yeah, we'll wrap yeah. up with Microwave Massacre. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. Where yeah. We're going to yeah. go, guys. What other way is there Let's just say Frankenhooker so we can say one a day and then call it a day. Yeah, come hang out if you have other questions. Uh, we'll be at uh, the booth 29 and 30 the in the main room. Yeah. Okay. We'll yeah. take photos. After we, got, come by, we got like hang out. five minutes here. Yeah. Come hang out. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thank thanks, guys. guys. Thanks so for coming. much. Shotgun's Podcast. Yeah. Thank you.